myself, you know. And I've had enough of this rabble. Come on! Okay, that's maybe a bit loud. You might need to crank that down a little bit. Anyway, hi! Oh, whoops. Now it's too quiet. I could turn the game volume back on. I'll fix that when I get in game. It's fine. I think we had four more drops to unlock. I'm really excited. Right before I um, let's get the stream started, I got a new. Uh, oops, that is not showing it. There we go. Nope, nope. Come on. Oh, wow, that is. There we go. Anyway, it's a nice new watch. I haven't worn a watch in ages. Hi. USA Network. <laughs> Rude. All right, crank you down a little bit. Back that music on. This should be good. Let me know if the volume's all right. And also, uh, I mean, I need to get in call myself, but you should jump in call with me. Okay, yeah, good. I'm not pushed at all. Awesome. Hi. Uh, if you're talking, I can't hear. Okay. Me. Hello. All right, where are we going? We are going to... I think this is where my last jobs were to unlock. I need to get... Uh, oh, I got Gladiator. I need to get Pugilist and Thaumaturge. And that's it. Yes. Okay, cool. Hey, pick one for me. What should I get first? Pugilist or Thaumaturge? Thaumaturge. You're coming in a bit loud, by the way. But Thaumaturge it is. Hmm, am I getting a little bit of lag here? Just a tiny bit. I'm going to adjust something. Oh, I know what I can do. Definitely don't need that open anymore. Um, we'll just close out that. Uh, take you off that. All right. I don't know if that made it any better, but oh well. How's restream treating you? You're definitely still a bit loud. I mean, I can just turn you down myself. I, you might be able to I haven't mind. used it, but I, I saw it while I was looking up solutions. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, no, it's great. So for a while it was being finicky until I realized you can, um, you don't have to just plug the restream address in to uh, Streamlabs, OBS, whatever. Um, you can use, like basically Streamlabs has the ability to choose a different hosting site specifically, and then it treats it like any of the other hosting sites. And so I just get that set up. So restream cheats it as a single site and uh, and then yeah or, oh, streamlabs treats it as a single site anyway whatever no, no, yeah your, your your software streams to it as if it was youtube or twitch and then their server handles the rest so when i was doing this on mana nun's previous life uh <laughs> did you see anything about this guild no about the thaumaturge guild they're great i had no idea just how hilarious this group is so it's in Ulda, which there's a lot of the uh plains folk lala fell in Ulda. Welcome to the Thaumaturgist Guild. It is fate that has guided your steps here, friend. Within these hallowed halls, the arts of devastation are taught. Primeval magics with which to bring about an enemy's room. If you would join our ranks and wield the power of Thaumaturgy, I urge you to seize this moment and confide in me your arcane ambitions. Hell yeah. Yes, there truly was no other answer, was there? Lean closer now, and I shall whisper to you of Thaumaturgy's beginnings. The nation of Uldah inherited its traditions Gathered from ancient... friends, listen again to our tale of the Bionicle. Yes. From ancient Belladia, a city founded by the descendants of the first mages, the secrets of these illustrious sorcerers were ultimately entrusted to the priests of the Order of Naldthal, who have passed them down from generation to generation ever since. 
focused and refined over centuries of use in the ordeal's funeral rites, the arcane magics of our ancestors eventually emerged as the art we now notice, know as thaumaturgy. A freezing blizzard to halt corruption, a raging fire to cleanse the corpse, a bolt of lightning to expel the sins of mortal life. The dwemers employed in the preparation of the dead are equally e efficacious when applied to the living. Thus does our guild thrive in the depths of Arzanath Ossuary, a sanctuary devoted to Thal, the divine arbiter of the afterlife. What say you then, adventurer? If you would plumb the abyssal depths of thaumaturgy, let our learned sages guide your descent. Ah, but before you leap into the darkness, you must prove to our guildmasters you are possessed of the spiritual fortitude necessary to look upon that which waits therein. When you are ready to submit to the judgment of our most eminent mages, say the word. The word. Well, adventurer, will you join our guild, or do you presume to ignore the urgings of- Or do you presume to ignore the urgings of impatient destiny? A wise decision indeed. To prepare for your initiation, I would have you study the volumes of fundamental thaumaturgical principle, all 108 of them. Or at least I would if such requirements had not been abolished. Too great a deterrent to fresh novices, they said. I suppose you shall just have to settle for calling upon the collective wisdom of our guildmasters. We have five, you see, all brothers of the same house. Though they all wield supreme authority, it is the eldest who provides a singular voice for the guild when one is required. Master Coco... Coco B... Coco Bigo. Coco Bigo. Coco Bigo. I believe. Okay, so it was then heading back. This emote that they're doing was released for players, like, not long ago. And, they're, like, they're sitting there going, wah ha ha And then just, just, just... Whoa, what? Oh, Val's teeth, miss. Did your mother never tell you not to startle a thaumaturge? Look at that expectant face, Coco Bigo. This lady is obviously a new applicant for the guild seeking audience with her eldest brother. Oh, Prelate Yayoke, she can recite the 307 verses of the funerary rites for the virtuous fallen, but the simple task of keeping her name straight seems ever beyond her grasp. Bwahaha! Well, I for one find the constant confusion endlessly entertaining! My apologies, my dear. My merriment was not meant to mock your mistake. It is her, it is her sibling Coco Buki with whom you oh, speak. I remember these people. What's this? What's this? Thal has led to us a new aspirant. Ah, Coco Buki! This Buki. is like right where I left off before. Were you here the entire time? Greetings, child. I am Coco Buki, the eldest, and I would venture to say the wisest of the five masters of the Thaumaturgist Guild. It is my solemn duty to furnish our would-be initiates with a succinct understanding of our beloved art. Thus, I would have your fullest attention. To wield Thaumaturgy is to unleash devastation of the highest magnitude. The lethal force of our spells far exceeds the destructive capability of any other form of arcane manipulation. Fire, lightning, blizzards, somnolence. The Thaumaturge calls upon all ex... Com com calls upon an expansive arsenal of offensive incantations to incapacitate and obliterate all manner of adversaries. Open and your smog. Mind. Open your mind to our sorceress teachings, and you too shall soon hold the unparalleled power of our discipline in the palm of your hand. <laughs> Thunder! Lightning! Smog! Yes. Such power has a price. You must be willing to plunge headfirst into the forbidding chasm of Thaumaturgy's secrets. For advancement in this art comes only with the completion of deadly and terrible trials. I ask you now, Aspirant, are you prepared to leap into the abyss in pursuit of power unrivaled? And for the second to last time in ARR, hell yeah! Hmm, hmm, hmm. A confident response. Your name, if you will? Very well, Anna. Let us mark your initiation with three eminently practical gifts. My first gift to you shall be in addition to your hunting law, the names of such enemies that will prove suitable to your training as a thaumaturge. The second and third gifts are the scepter and shield, instruments you shall need to focus the destructive force of your will. Do you believe your initiation over? My dear disciple, we have only just begun. We have only just begun. This is just the beginning. Take your new weapons in hand, and I will set you forth upon your first try. So the, um... This is the one job in Air Arm that I have real, real trouble explaining. Because even White Mage, you are calling upon, or I guess Conjurer, you are calling upon the magic of nature, you're calling upon the magic around you. This one is actively supposed to be about calling upon your own magic, and the whole problem with Mana is she does not have much of her own magic. So, <laughs> I don't have much of an explanation for this one. I do actually want to move this out. It's gonna go 
there for now. I also want to move it up. And yeah, we'll just continue leaving it in order for now. That's fine. And then we are going to put on recommended gear, which is apparently all just my basic clothes. Cool. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The scepter will complement. The scepter well complements the avid desire for destructive power written upon your features. Now, we shall complete your initiation with a trial to test the limits of your aptitude for channeling thaumaturgy. And I just go, let me guess. The trial is killing three each of three different creatures? Huge hornets, star vomits, and snapping shrews inhabit this land in abundance. Exercise your sorcerer's might and slay three of each of these creatures before returning to my side. What a surprise! I don't have the emote where I get to, like, wave my weapons around yet. probably run down the stairs. Anyway, so they should all be right out this closest gate. Which is like right here. One of the closest get the job to actually go do the first creatures places. At least I think they're all out here. Yeah, okay. Ah, Thaumaturgy. Already complicated. Oh, I don't have fire yet. Okay. you have to eat to level up. It just gets you extra XP. Yep. Humble and Astral Fire. Huge hornets and snapping shrews. Now, snapping shrews might not be out this way. Huge hornets and snapping shrews might not be out this way. Dang it, I might actually have to go to the other gate. Didn't think I had to. Oh well. Exactly, I was doing this. Commenters take so long to cast things. Okay, cool. All right, out to the other gate then. Turned out I lied. This is a little chocobo in a dragon costume, and it's adorable. Here's the uh, reward for the New Year's event. Oh, come on. Excuse me. Sorry, the Heaven's Turn event. Every holiday has a different name, even New Year's. Uh, do I have a side quest? To this is my warrior quest. Uh, no, I do not have a cyclist anymore. 
What's up, Judge Akuda? Just tell me, what brings you fr brings you here, friend? Hmm? Looking for a bit of work, perhaps? Some small job to add a little weight to that coin purse of yours? Hmm? Well, you're in luck. The pugilists have just placed an order with me for several of the leather gloves and harnesses they use for sparring. But the traders are cruel, for I find myself lacking the hides required. But that I had pelts of a few snapping shrews. What say you, friend? Hmm? Care to help a merchant down on his luck? Hmm? Bring me five snapping shrew pelts, and I promise to make it worth your while. You can find the creatures from the central family. Well, that's where I was headed anyway, and those were the creatures that I was going to be killing anyway. Yeah, it's one main scenario quest, one job quest, and one side quest at a time. This is the only exception because I accidentally unlocked, like, started it before I uh, went to go do other things. But luckily, the beginning of it is, go meet this person at some point. And so I uh, can take my time. The problem with having more than one side quest is sometimes they're like, this is super important, please go do it now. And then I'm just like, no, I'm going to go do these other things first. Bye. So now if I... It does. It resets it every time. That's cool. Swap to uh, new gear by now. Whoops, never mind. I knew I didn't have like new magic gear yet, but I thought I had something to wear. Apparently not. Oh no, somebody's in trouble. Ah, it's this guy. Rashild the Ungood is being a jerk. That woman didn't best me, I merely came unprepared. I didn't think when I left my bed this morning that some slight scold with a pieste sized chip on her shoulder might challenge me to a bloody duel. But I wasn't about to refuse, refuse her, not with everyone watching and my reputation on the line. If I ain't one thing, it's craven. But here I am, bloodied and bruised while that hell's cat sits over there smirking. What she did ain't proper, and I plan to learn her a lesson, just this time with a wee bit of help. What say you? Yeah, I got you, man. If you think you can do any better, I invite you to try. And... Uh... Zap! That's not good. This actually isn't going well. it again yet? Oh no! Really? 
Why can't I use it again? There we go. Crap, this is uh this is not good. I'm gonna have to leave this one. Yep, sorry bud. You're on your own. I'll come back and help you when I'm a little uh a little more well geared. Sorry. I don't particularly feel bad about that one anyway. on this spell. Oh yeah, see, I'm definitely getting a little whack. So you saw how I killed five shrews and got five shrew pelts? Yeah, actually looting one for myself never goes that well. It's very annoying. The bristly hide of a snapping shrew. Exceptional! These are fine shrew pelts indeed. Well done, my friend. The pugilist skilled is among my largest clients. I fear what would have come to pass had this order been delayed any longer. Take this, hmm? You've more than earned it. Yay. It's every job except for pugilist at six or higher now. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You have the satisfied look of a mage who has utterly vanquished her foes. Man, I formally welcome you into the Brotherhood of Thaumaturges. The purpose of this trial was to gauge your capacity for wielding thaumaturgy, an innate quality the limits of which are bound by the level of etheric energy flowing through your physical being. And there's the problem. This is the one job where that doesn't really make sense. Because I do not have a very high level of etheric energy flowing through my physical being. Aether, the very stuff of life, exists within all living creatures to a greater or lesser extent. Remember this, for it is the most basic law of arcane manipulation. As your experience grows, so shall your reserves of thaumaturgical endurance. The wellspring of your magical might will also swell in response to moments of extreme terror and duress. When you find yourself seeking greater challenge, when next you crave the thrill of exquisite fear, that is when you shall know the time has come for you to visit me once more. <laughs> Which technically is right now, but I gotta go do some other stuff first. Oh, I suppose this is a side quest as well. I wasn't really paying attention. What up, Erasmus? I am Erasmus of the Order of Naldthal, and I am charged with studying the anatomy of this region's fauna and the environs in which they dwell. For the dark art of our order is death itself, and power of death can come only through knowledge of life. One day I shall publish my findings in a sim single comprehensive volume, The Many Breaths of Thanali. But there is much work to be done before that day. And aid me, sister. Bring me five bottles of marmot blood. Perhaps I shall name you in a footnote. Marmots are hardly creatures that thrive are hardy creatures that thrive nigh everywhere. You will most certainly find them just outside the city, West Thanali, by way of the gate of Sophos Gate of the Sultana. Do take care. They can be feisty little critters, my friend. Yeah, I killed a few of them already. He doesn't seem in a huge rush, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, unlock Pugilist first, which should be no, not here. So what are you up to right now? Oh, uh, I'm. Uh, I I'm. I was looking at OBS because I was messing around with the. Um... Oh, that's weird. The go live and thing has reverted. I I uh, had to fix the stream tags because they were wrong. And um, I noticed that my chat overlay is hard to read on light colored backgrounds. So 
I was setting up a plugin that allows the chat that I'm pulling from the Twitch chat box and rendering as a transparent overlay to have a shader applied that gives an outline around the text. Because it's not a text source, so it can't, like, add a text outline. Gotcha. But it looks better yeah. now. There's a little black line around all the text, so it's easy to see on different colors. Give me just one second. Ah, it is a fine day to be watched by pugilists at their training. Oh, whoops. <laughs> it's Hamon. Yes. He's much See, see how your Twitch chat is, uh, so. it's all blue? Uh, yeah. Or I guess your restream chat? Yeah. Yeah, I, I set up mine with a chroma key so the background color gets erased. Yeah, I would have to... What I can do is I yeah. can set it up to be transparent and put my own background in. But anyway. Greetings and welcome to the Pugilist Skill. We Pugilists are specialists in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Through rigorous training, we forge devastating weapons of our fists and feet, which we employ to great effect in battle. There is no better place in all the realm to train in our discipline than here. If you would walk the path of the pugilist, I highly recommend you add your name to our role. What say you, friend? A decision you'll not regret, but before we proceed to the paperwork, it is essential that you know something of our guild's storied past. Since time immemorial, man has used whatever has been at his disposal to settle disputes. In the beginning, that meant fighting with his fists. Such hand-to-hand -hand combat existed in various forms throughout Eorzea, each evolving independently of one another. The origins of pugilism as we know it, however, can be traced back to the staging of barehanded bouts at the Colosseum. These contests attracted fighters from far and wide, bringing their myriad styles crashing together on blood sands. Amidst this chaotic intermingling of styles, there rose a pugilist of singular strength and skill. This woman made it her life's mission to master every form she encountered, that she might refine her art. Among her many song-worthy exploits, we pugilists remember her participation in the gladiator tournament most fondly. Back when barehanded fighting was still seen as a pastime for peasants, she took on fully armed and armored gladiators and effortlessly bested the lot of them. Word of her feet spread across the realm like wildfire, of course, and Uldah uh, swiftly transformed into a center of pugilism, with people flocking from all over to train under this master among masters. The woman's name was Cornelia, and it is to her that the pugilist skill owes its existence. The art practiced here is based on her all-encompassing style, and this training hall is modeled upon the one which she built. And there it is, a brief history of our guild. I've told this tale a thousand times, but gods, it never fails to fan the flames of my fighting spirit. Now then, before we can proceed with your enrollment, you must first obtain the Guildmaster's approval. Let me know when you're ready to meet him. Right now. Master Hamon is among the greatest pupilists of our time. For long years, the man ruled the Blood Sands as the Holy Fist, though he has since retired in favor of training aspir er, aspiring fighters. You will find him overseeing his charges yonder. Go now and show to him the fighting spirit that burns within you. Uh, do I have a box amount now? Do I have any kind of attack amount? Rally, I guess. I am going to need that out eventually. Pet. <laughs> Poke. Here, I'll do pose. Which I already know is this stupid cat one, but whatever. Ha ha ha! Past time you got your arse back here? Well, what did the dancer have to say about my proposition? Ah! You're not my errand boy! There's no dancer, there, there never was! I'm not doing anything indecent, I swear to the gods! What? You're here to enroll? Oh, well, why didn't you say so sooner? my capacity as guildmaster, I would, glad, I would be glad to give you a primer on the art of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Doubtless you already knew this, but when pugilists fight with our fists and feet, while these don't deal as much damage as a blade, it hardly matters when you can land several blows for each swing of the sword. What we lack in destructive force, we more than make up for in speed and cunning. Under my guidance, not only will you master striking techniques, you'll also learn to string them together to deliver an endless flurry of blows. Only through such fierce combinations can a pugilist realize his potential. Yeah! Welcome to one element of his personality. Ha! <laughs> ha! Crikey! I'm spent from all this talking! Yes, it was the talking. You ought to speak more less. It'd give me a chance to catch my breath. But where was I? Ah, right. Joining the guild. Before you do so, I must warn you that the path of the pugilist is long and arduous. Do you believe you've got what it takes to go the distance? Be honest with yourself now. And for the final time in ARR? Hell yeah! Yes, you have fighting spirit. I can see it in your eyes. 
I see no reason to deny you a place in these halls. Welcome to the guild, lass. To help you on your way, I'll add some names to your hunting block. Opponents that you might hone your skills against. And so as to make a budding, budding pugilist of you, here's your very own pair of horror. They're a tad old and rusted, but that'll serve to make you look meaner, I reckon. Now, I have a mind to assign you your first lesson. Arm yourself with your weapons and let me know when you're ready to begin. Don't you wish your girlfriend was... <laughs> that, that started to come through and then it just totally died. But good reference. I... <sighs> Looking every bit of pugilist, Les. Now, the learning can commence. For your first lesson, let me guess. You want me to go kill three of e three each of three different creatures? I want you to test your fledgling skills against the vermin of Vandalin. Get out there and put down three marmots, three hornets, and three shrews. Return here when the deed is done. Now, this goes without saying, but I expect you to fight using the horror I just gave you. It counts for naught if you skewer the beasties with a spear or fry them with a spell, say. All right, we're gonna kill some marmots as well. Oh wait, it's supposed to anyway. Cool. And I already have a side quest, so not picking up that one. Yeah, were you? Am I coming through? Or... Yeah, you are. Huh. Well, I heard you go ah, uh, and then I heard you say that. So if you said something in between those two, no. No, before that. The song did. I, I was somebody posted a video in Discord and I was playing it, but I definitely had my microphone switched off. I don't know. Are you, are you on headphones? Yeah. Then do you use your computer have but, a built-in microphone? Uh, no. And also, Discord isn't able to do that. Or at least it's not able to do that when I wanted to do that, so, you know. Oh, great. Now I know I can't watch stuff while I have the stream on, because uh, it will somehow bypass the switch on the microphone and come through anyway. I'm glad it wasn't something more embarrassing. That is uh, very valid. Why are all these teleport skills on my bars? I thought I got rid of those. Good. Nope. Good. Nope. Good. Although I actually want to switch that. That works better. Okay. Nope, not Thaumaturge. I forgot to put Pugilist out. You are going there. Do I have better gear I can wear yet? No, oh, not yet. Yeah, my voice definitely doesn't come through when I have the microphone switched off, so... I hope I don't have an electrical short. I might just still need to turn everything down a little bit. The stream should be fine, I just need to turn it down a little bit. Sure. Yeah. I have an unread whisper that's going to be unread forever because I got a whisper from somebody who is not accepting messages back from me. On what? On Twitch. It's like, this user has turned on block whispers from strangers and must start a conversation with you first. And I'm like, yeah, you did start a conversation with me first. It says howdy right here. Okay. Android has to have an always on... Always on display. There we go. The Twitch one will keep it open, but this one's not. Oh, uh, I don't think I don't think always on display works the way you think it does. I wanted to keep the 
the screen on so I can um yeah the chat open. The, the so-called always on display only shows like the clock and the weather. We'll see. Well, now that I've explained how I think it works, I'm going to be proven wrong. No, because you also have someone who thinks it works a different way. Okay. I don't know. It just are you challenging me? Are you, are you saying your luck is worse than mine? No. I'm saying you might be right. Therefore, you might be right. Yeah, but it's more, like, karmically ironic if I'm the one who's wrong. If I was saying you're definitely not right, then you wouldn't be. Maybe. I don't know. Then it would come down to... You keep talking things. like this, it's going to start raining. <laughs> well, like, you in it, your bedroom, won't. while you're trying to stream. That's some Jumanji stuff right there. All right, who can wait longer? The person who wants the, uh, ah, the person who wants the info can wait longer. I'm gonna go turn in my pugilist quest first. Me. And then I'll be I done. Can wait I'll be done with my first uh, combat quests, and I can go start on uh, gathering ones. Ah, you're back. None the worse for the exertion. Youthful vigor is a truly blessed thing. If you want to become strong, you must neglect your training. Indeed, a pugilist is only as good as the number of strikes he's dealt. So get out there, mana, and let your fists fly. When the time is ripe, I'll teach you something new. There's no limit to the potential of youth. I look forward to seeing you come into your own. Ha ha ha! The level 5 quest is what shows you the other elements of his personality really well. Okay, mm. now that we're done with that, we are going to go learn mining, because that sounds interesting. Uh, I want to go. Oh, no, we're going to go turn this quest first. Soundboards? Since when are there soundboards? On Discord? Yeah. That's a while ago. Back when their shift towards commercialization had quite hit really bad commercialization, but is it a nitro thing? The blood. Have you brought it? No. I mean, actually, I don't know. I think yes, it is. Yes, we shall serve nicely. By virtue of your toil, I am one step closer to publishing the many breaths of Thanlet. Thank you. Take this as recompense. Go now. May the traitor smile upon. You. I've been taking money and not the gear, because even though I could use the gear, I plan on crafting my own, so who cares? Is this coming through? Yep, well, just you. Nothing else. Huh. Okay, so it's not system sound coming through. Okay, we are going... So I guess it's just when disc... When is it... Is Discord programmed so that when it plays a sound, it automatically uploads it to whatever the current call is? I don't think so, but I don't know. Open soundboard. That came through. Please don't do it again. It wasn't too loud. Ah. Too, too loud, but... It's the soundboard. I bet Discord is broken and it thinks that all sound that it's playing is part of the soundboard. That probably is not the case, but... I don't know. Wait, is that the mining guild? No, that's the goldsmith's guild. I'm not going to be learning crafting until I learn how to gather things. I did it in a slightly different order last time. I don't remember exactly what it was. I think I went. I think I got one crafting job and then went to go get the gatherings to, like, I got, I got blacksmith and armorer, and then was like, I want to be able to collect my own materials and got mining, and then went and got bot as well. But I'm just going to get the gatherers first this time. Except fishing. I'll leave fishing for last. Oh, not here. Front desk. <laughs> well, mad adventurer, you stand within the Miner's Guild, the place where seekers of the realm's mineral wealth gather. With pickaxe and sledgehammer, we miners work rock and earth that they might rock and stones, so they may yield us ores, fossils, precious stones, and more. 
If you have a mind to join our ranks, you'll be pleased to know that we are currently recruiting. Great riches await those with strong backs and keen eyes. I wish to join the Miner's Guild. Let's learn about your history. A decision you will not regret. You have just taken your first step towards striking it rich. To look at the lands around Duel Dog, one would be forgiven for thinking the region barren of opportunity. But beneath the surface, the scene could not be more different. There lie veins of copper, silver, and gold beyond measure. For as long as he has dwelt in Thanalin, man has availed himself of these vast deposits, giving rise to a thriving mining trade, which forms the foundation of our nation's prosperity. Of course, the mining trade as it is today owes much to an event which took place some century and a half ago, namely the Mad Mer Mithril Rush. Never before had the Sultanate seen such an influx of migrants. Endless throngs came from lands near and far, spurred on by the dream of discovering the motherboat. Alas, a harsh reality awaited them. You see, the vast majority of these poor souls were miners in name alone, and they possessed neither the proper equipment nor the training to realize their dreams. To make matters worse, the mining concerns, who in those days held absolute power, did not scruple to exploit them. Presented with a glut of unskilled labor, they proceeded to fill every tunnel to bursting, and atrocious working conditions soon became the norm. Miners were paid a pittance for back-breaking labor and saw naught of the riches they unearthed. Pushed to the breaking point, the workers banded together to form the Miner's Guild with the aim of improving conditions while protecting the integrity of the trade. Square Enix says, hell yeah, uh... Oh my god, brain fart. Unions. There we go. Since then, we have sought to educate folk and correct mining practices, both to prevent accidents and to curb the impact that our trade has upon the environment. I trust you now have a better understanding of what we do. All that is left is to commit your name to our role. When you're ready to do so, pray speak with me again. I shall guide you through the enrollment procedure. Let's do it. So, are you ready to join the Miners Guild? I guess I'm not actually done saying hell yeah yet. I have other things. To, I have other moments. Music to my ears. Aye, the kind made when one pickaxe strikes gold. You must introduce yourself to Guildmaster Adalberta right away. Her approval is required if you are to be formally admitted to our ranks. In case you're unaware, Adalberta is perhaps the most accomplished of those miners who still swing a pickaxe. Her understanding of our trade is unsurpassed, and her flair for prospecting uncanny. Her brain, in short, is a veritable gold mine of knowledge. Much of it concerning the mining of gold. Haha. <laughs> Dressing apart, you stand to learn a great deal. When you're ready, pray present yourself to Adalberta. You will find her down the steps yonder, over by the bar. Bar? Yeah, I'd like one, uh, one full beer, please. I'm hungry. Let's eat some zoni. Drink some zoni? Soup. Got it. Well, Mad Adventurer, Adalbert is my name, and I'm the master of this guild. I take it you wish to become a miner. Well, our doors are open to all who aren't afraid to work hard and get dirty. I'm doing the wrong voice for her. Let's try a little bit better. Oop. Thanks to recent advances in refining techniques, it's now possible to smelt even low-purity ores. I mention this because it's allowed us to reopen a number of mines which were long thought exhausted, prompting trade to flourish. Truth be told, with business as it is at the moment, we can't take on enough new miners. Few folk make better miners than adventurers, you being a hardy lot. What's more, you're well-traveled, which serves to expand the guild's sphere of activity. Oh, but I'm not suggesting you join solely for our benefit. For your part, you'll acquire skills that will prove to your profit. Mutually beneficial arrangement, I trust you'll agree. So, what say you? You will join us, yes? Ready to work hard and get dirty? Hell yeah! Then I bid you welcome to the Miner's Guild. May your, tolls, may your toils never go unrewarded. Now then, here's a pickaxe to get you started. It's not the newest, but it should serve an office well enough. Go and take it up, see how it feels in your hands. Speak to me again when you're ready, and I'll assign you a little task to help you get into the swing of things. Wink wink. Yay! Now you can mine for fish. Yep. I wish there was literally one fish in the game that you could actually get via mining, and I would, uh... And I would be like, You think you're joking? Okay, let's put on this outfit, and then this, so I don't end up nude. Boom. Boom. Oh, and... Recommended mm -hmm. gear. You look good with a pickaxe, man. Now that you're suitably equipped, your training can commence. Miner learns her craft best in the wilderness with pickaxe in hand. So I love this. She's like, okay, you're going to learn mining. Here's your training. Go mine. <laughs> to begin, let's see how you fare with good old copper ore. Bring me, say, ten chunks. There are deposits of the stuff throughout Van. I doubt you have to go very far outside the city. Seek out some promising locations outside the gate of the Sultana and the gate of Null. Swing away. Motion may feel awkward at first, but in time it will become second nature. The same goes for crafting, which is even weirder. They're like, alright, I want you to smelt me some copper ingots. And they like explain 
that it is difficult and you have to be careful about certain things, but they don't tell you anything about how to actually do the smelting. They're just like, all right, now go smelt. That's how you learn to smelt. <laughs> Everyone knows you, you, you get eight cobblestones in a square and you build a furnace and then you put the furnace, the thing in the furnace and you put coal in the bottom. Was it you and I that were talking recently about how even Minecraft gives you a crafting instruction? Uh, yes, and then I said, uh, early versions of Minecraft didn't do that. Uh, you're right. And then you're like, on display, oh, you're really old, because they, they've done that for like the last hundred years. I didn't say you're really old, I just said, like, that wasn't always the case. Uh, and Brad, then I went, she said outside, I went to, you know, I, I went in my room and cried. Oh. Because I'm old. I mean, I was about to be like, I'm older, and then I was like, oh, I, I guess that's not technically true. You're a little bit older. But you're like barely older than me, so. I'm a year older than you. You are. Uh, crap. Tim's birthday is. Wow. Eight, one's yours. Oh, you fuck crap. you too, Alex. <laughs> you are crap. Um. When's your birthday? I don't remember. Tim's is April. Is yours also April? Yeah. Cool. I need to get it on my calendar because uh, my memory. I didn't remember people's birthdays at the best of times, and now they're even worse, so. Okay. Gathering log. Copper ore. Where are we going? I'm not there. Where are we going? This is where I am, right? Never mind, I am here. Am I? Is this. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, cool. Oh, that's right. Uh. So it's going to give me a very general idea of where these things are, but I'm just going to have to go find them myself because this is supposed to put a little circle on the map that says, here's where those spots are out in this area. Except I don't even have that. <laughs> Thanks to uh, no map icons. So... Ah, my mind. I will have to literally just use my abilities. Okay, prospect on. We're gonna move that over here for now, so I don't need it anymore. Uh, I'm gonna leave the rest Those of these oil pumps on for now. Yeah, Are they the oil yeah. over there? Yep. yep, they're the hammers. I mean, it might not literally be oil. It might be some kind of basically fantasy oil. I don't remember for sure. Ah, uh, yes, magic yes. oil. Yep, and they're encroaching on a whole little town over there and trying to force the people out of that town. All right, we're going to yep, get one of everything, so we're going to get these first. <laughs> so with uh, those four pickaxe hits, I have leveled up four times. <laughs> All right, that was Lay of the Land 1, nearest, this is Lay of the Land 2, highest. I don't think I need this, so I am going to... I'll stick it over there just in case I decide I need it later. All right, muddy water can go into my general crafting. This is the general crafting area. And then I need nine more. Quick gathering, let's go. Ugh. So when you get later in the game, unless you're very, very new to an extension... Late in the game? Or... what? Oh, late. Got it. Took me a moment there. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, other people arguably have. 
I have not. I'm not really injured. Well, this character might be. I don't know. My other character is effectively asexual. <laughs> that, that's personal canon. Nothing to do. Effectively. Well, look. There are people she thinks are very pretty or cute, but I, I have never... With that character, I have never had any interest in doing any of the, like, more lewd RP stuff in this game. I'm playing it wrong. Ah. Oh, yeah. So, so later in the game, um, you get to the point where, unless you're, like, really new to an area, if you're keeping up with your equipment, you always have a 100% chance of getting at least some material from every uh, every hit. Uh, but here, you can see one of those spots, I only had like a 65% chance of getting anything. And it's like, oh no. Oh no, I'm so baby. Luckily, I'll be making my own gear, so that will help quite a bit. <laughs> don't like how it was laid out. Hey, you got your hunk of hunk of copper ore. Got your copper wall. Let's see what you think. Let's see here. Ten chunks, just as I ordered. She says while looking at one chunk. Well done, Anna. Thanks, sir. A, a unit, of course. Tell me, is being a miner out like you imagined? Harder than expected, is it? Heh. <laughs> all new recruits, all new recruits say as much. It takes a combination of knowledge, experience, and instinct to know where to dig. Yet it's ultimately backbreaking labor that yields you your prize. Make no mistake, and hard work. mining is grueling work. You'll be dog-tired most of your waking hours. But tell me, did you not feel invigorated each time your pickaxe struck home? Did you not experience a thrill of triumph when the earth finally yielded up your prize? That is what we miners live for. You may be right to collapse, your face caked in weak old dirt, but the promise of discovery drives you on, and the instant you feel that which you have long sought, that sparkling instant, you feel like a god among men. You've made a fine start, so you maintain your efforts. Practice swinging your pickaxe till your arms have learned the motion, then return here. I'll have another little task for you. You know, I gotta say, that's kind of something Minecraft has lost. Or maybe never really had. What's that? Like, going on a quest to, to strike the mother load, you know? You like, said honestly, the best way to get most materials in Minecraft isn't to mine for them at all. Okay. I mean, you would know better than I would, but that's fair. I don't know. It's how yeah. a lot of people play it. You're saying the best You can get, get diamonds, diamonds a lot faster by getting, like, treasure chests and stuff. Oh. I mean... You can get iron guess. faster by just building a machine that gives you iron. Is, is getting treasure chests not... Does that not qualify as the... As Netherite is uh, is uniformly distributed, so the best way to do it is to just build a TNT can and blow up the Nether. Okay, you did, did you listen to what I said? No, that's it's not the same. You don't really go on a quest to find treasure chests. I mean, that's like you make a lot of little quests to find a ship, but like it's it's mostly grinding because there's so many damn ships, you find a whole bunch of them. Yeah, but you got to go get the maps. You got to follow the maps. Yeah, That's the like ship, the, the map is always pretty close to where the ship is. Yeah, so I would say the game is not very good at quests. That I would absolutely agree with. That is why lots of players make quest-based mods. But yeah, they're, they're, I, I don't mean like a normal fantasy quest. I meant like if you're, you're, you're trying to, you know, find a, a rare, rare mineral, you know, that you've never seen. 
And so you have to like survey the land to like find signs of, the, of where a deposit might be, and, like search around. Do you think people would enjoy that if you made a game like that? Like a big that? hole. I don't know. People who like mining. I didn't say who would. I just said, do you think there would be people who would really enjoy yeah. that? Yeah. Why not sell terribly well? Learn botany. Saw the botanist skill there a while ago, and it sounded interesting. <laughs> I probably passed side quests again. Oh well. Those people didn't look like they needed help enough, I guess. How is that ship balanced like that with the airbag way off center? Although that, that is the I airbag will, for? That, I will actually argue, is a pretty silly question. Um, given that the way ships move on the ocean is by having their sail angled. No, 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 no. Not angled. That, that, that balloon is supposed to give it buoyancy. Yeah. And much like water currents, there are air currents. No, 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 no. It's not for propulsion. It's not about currents. The ship is hanging off of the balloon. So the center of mass of the ship should be below the center of lift provided by the balloon. I don't know. It, it's like, are you, are you, you wouldn't, it's, it's not you wouldn't design a helicopter with like, well, you wouldn't design a helicopter with the, with the propeller all on one side of the helicopter. Cause then your helicopter would be all like at an angle the whole time you're trying to fly. I guess it, or actually if it works with a helicopter, the you'd be spinning. The balloon is always going to be pulling directly up. Yeah, like there can be some yeah. wind jostling the ship around a little, but on average, the ship will be directly down from where the balloon is. Yeah. So if you put the balloon on the side like that, the whole ship's going to be at a 45 degree angle the whole time you're flying. Or you're going to be constantly fighting that at least. Like, yeah, if the, sh if the ship's weight distribution is off center, you might move the balloon a little off center, but there, there was no way to balance that ship with the balloon where it is. I don't know, maybe there is. Also, the balloon's way too small, but it's a fantasy world and people don't respect gravity. They use, like, wind crystals to keep it buoyant enough. Because there are yeah, the, stones... Yeah, the, the balloon is evidently in this world that can just create wind. Yeah, the, the, uh, the balloon is evidently not necessary at all. It just makes it look like an airship. It probably makes it a lot cheaper and easier. Probably not with the balloon that small. If it's constantly... I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Stop right there. Not another step. Uh, I apologize if I've startled you, but please be careful. The ground here is covered in rose hips. You see, my seed pouch is oh, no. so threadbare that it finally split open. Unbeknown to myself, I've been scattering Azima rose hips all along this road. Oh, uh, good, good madam, if you would help me gather them, I'd be ever so grateful. Thank you. Your kindness is truly a blessing from the elementals. The rose hips should be lying on the road between here and the Great Lone Growery. Remember to tread lightly, lest you crush them underfoot. Hey, what do you know? I was already headed to the Great Lone Growery. You're, you're gonna get over there and find that they've gathered together and formed the town of Helm. I don't get the reference. I thought I told you about that last time. Hmm. With the rose hips? Was it my brother? No, the, the the legendary town of Helm. What was it? What was in reference about? All right, I have a story to tell. Well, you're gonna have to. I don't. You're gonna have to so, stop yourself whenever I'm talking to somebody. My uh, Which I'm about my to Jewish here. family sent me to Jewish Sunday school to learn about you know did how you, to be a did Jew. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Yeah, you told me to stop talking. Yeah, you just gotta pause whenever I'm talking to a character again. Okay. okay? Hello there! Welcome to the Botanist Skill. What brings you here today? Hmm? Interested in becoming a botanist, are you? Oh, then you've come to the right place. At our guild, you can study under some of the finest botanists in all the realm. An enticing proposition, is it not? So, what say you? Would you like to, add, like to add your name to our role? Yeah. Excellent. Now you're doubtless eager to dive headlong into the nearest shrubbery. But first, a brief explanation on the origins of the Botanist Skill. 
Our guild boasts a long history. Its roots can be traced back some 500 years to when our nation was still in its infancy. It was around that time that a precursor organization to our own was established to facilitate communion with the elementals. Ah, uh, but I suspect you're already confused not being forest born. Let me put it in a way that your kind would understand. The Twelve's Wood doesn't belong to man, but all mighty beings known as elementals. Uh, I wish the game knew that I was already a conjurer, because I've already been told all this. It is by their leave that we Grudonians dwell here in the forest, and it's by their leave that we receive of its bounty. Ever since mankind settled in the Twelve's Wood, it's been necessary for us to obtain the elementals' permission prior to taking aught from their domain. Historically, this was a rather involved process, in that only a precious few could actually commune with them. Specifically, those conjurers blessed with the ability to hear the elementals, aptly known as hearers. In order to relay the Elemental's will, the botanists in a more timely manner, a new organization was formed with a hearer at its mouth and ears. The organization would eventually evolve to become the Botanist's Guild. To this day, the Guild employs the services of a hearer who offers guidance to our members. Yet, this is no longer organization's sole concern. We also seek to promulgate correct harvesting practices. That is, practices which honor the will of the Elementals. And that, my friend, is the story of how our guild came to be. I trust you have a newfound appreciation for the work we do. Now, with all this talk of Elementals and communing, mayhaps you're wondering whether you're fit to join us. Well, you may cast such doubts aside. You do not have to, be, have to have been raised as a good little for, forest-born girl, gross, to be a botanist, nor do you need to know the secret forest-born salute. I, I jest. You just need a healthy respect for nature and the will to learn. If you honestly believe you possess these things, it would be my pleasure to recommend you to our guildmaster. Please wait a moment while I see to the formalities. Speak to me again when you're ready to begin the enrollment procedures. All right, he needs a moment. He needs to go turn in his quest. You were saying? I forgot Final Fantasy XIV was a visual novel. Yes. Everything is quest locked. You took too long. Good madam, pray tell me you've recovered all the rose hips and abandoned not one to a traveler's food. Blessings be upon you. I feared this path would be lined with roses next year. Not that such a wondrous sight would be wholly objectionable, but Azima roses are ill-suited to this location. As a botanist, it's my responsibility to see Gridania's plants grow and thrive in the most ideal conditions. A place for every seed and every seed in its place, you might say. It was most gracious of you to aid me in my time of need. I pray the elementals extend you the same kindness. Ready to enroll in the botanist guild, I take it? Music to my ears. It would be my pleasure to refer you to the guildmaster for Fucha. Our guildmaster's knowledge of nature is second to none. One need only witness her uncanny knack for spotting the finest timber to see that hers is a truly God's given talent. It is for this reason that she holds the title of first botanist. Oh, but you need not be overawed, for she is the kindliest of souls. You will find the guildmaster just outside this building. Seek her out and impress upon her your desire to become a botanist. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. And one of the best guild masters. I'm Fafucha, the master of this guild. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I take it, Leon. Leon Schult? Leon Schult? Leon Seol. Maybe. Has given you an overview of botany already? Well then, I suppose I'd better continue where he left off. <laughs> oh, Gridanians may rightly claim to share a close relationship with nature, but none is so intimate as that of the bodies. It is our calling to nurture the natural environment to the mutual benefit of man and wood. But even as nature holds us in her loving embrace, providing for our every need, with her wood, she is at heart an unsentimental creature, one that will take life just as readily as she gives it. Being a botanist means coming face to face with this uncomfortable truth on a regular basis. Knowing this, do you, will, do you, wish, do you still wish to walk our path? Walk the path of the Easy botanist? for you to say. Hell yeah! The look in your eye bespeaks the passion in your heart. Very well. I bid you welcome to the botanist's guild. To help you on your way, I present you with this, I present you with this hatchet. Take it up, and then present yourself to me again. I will assign you your first task as a botanist of the guild. One would think that the first, the starting tool for a botanist would be like a spade or something. Well, or we're, like shears. We're wildwood botanists. We do get a sight Yeah, you later. apparently plant things with a miniature axe. Okay. We, we do get a sight later. A site that is a farmer's tool, not a botanist's tool. So the legend goes, I don't remember it terribly well because I was a kid. And I think I saw a cartoon about it. But uh, what I recall of the legend is that um, God was like, there's a bunch of dumb people in the world. And he sent an angel down. He said, I want you to find 
I don't know if it, the hundred or the thousand dumbest people that you can find and take their souls and bring them to me in heaven so that they don't have to, I guess, be in the world as idiots. And uh, so the angel goes down and he finds a bunch of dumb people and takes their souls and puts them in a bag and is on his way back to heaven. But he, he does a road to El Dorado and does a bit of a horizontal trajectory before going more vertical. Okay, and yes. the bag snacks on a tree branch and rips open. And all the souls fall, pour out all over the ground. And uh, they they Oops, respawn. The Oops, I spilled my and all over the ground. Basically, well, it's like that guy with the rose hips, you know? They, they, they land all over the ground, they respawn, and uh, they, all, they're all there. So they figure they're just going to they start a settlement right there where they landed. And that is the city of the, the, the town of Helm. Which is the dumbest town in the world because it's populated by the hundred dumbest people in the world. And then there's a bunch of tales about all the dumb shit that they got into. Nice. The one I remember best is it's time for Passover. And so this guy wants to host a Seder, a big dinner at his house. And so he needs the big banquet table, which he keeps in the closet. And he goes to the closet to retrieve the banquet table, and he opens the door, but he cannot enter the closet because there's this big thing in the way. And, uh... Oh, yeah, you told me So he's like, I, yeah. I could have sworn, yeah. Yeah, you definitely told me this one. I don't remember what it was in reference to, but you definitely told me this one. I'm just talking about you. He's in a bag of rose hips, and it ripped, and there's rose hips all over the ground. I see you have your hatchet on. Very good. A botanist's hatchet is his livelihood. Never forget this. If you fail to keep its blade clean and clean and keen, your efforts will yield you naught but sweat and splinters. But let us see about your first task. Ah, yes. To help you grasp the basics of botany, I would like you to gather ten pots worth of latex. The forests yield to us many and more resources. It's the botanist's job to know what can be found and where. If it is latex you require, you would do well to search just outside the blue badger gate or the yellow serpent gate. Both the gates that aren't the one you're not allowed to go out of. Seek out the mature trees that stand in those areas, and then put your hatchet to use. I wish you well. Yeah, so yeah, a good yeah, yeah. thing we don't have any viewers, because I'm sure that anyone watching is, you know, eager to hear how the story ends. I mean... If we did have viewers, you know, they'd be in the chat saying something about it. Sure. Ahem. <clears throat> I want to walk on the flowers. Why does it... Some active viewers and chatters in the community. Oh, I see. So these aren't necessarily people that are watching now. They're just... Oh, yeah. I don't know. People that Twitch thinks is important. This guy is over here being like, Man, I wish someone would come help, I guess, because he has the quest thing over his head. God damn it, another adventurer? You're like flies on fuck. Whatever did Gridania do to serve some Whatever Gridania did to deserve such a plague, I don't... <sighs> I suppose times are changing and they keep telling me I should, and perhaps you might be. Oh, God's help me. Just take this Azima Rose to Waldu as Stillblade Fane, will you? Well, what are you still standing there for? Go and deliver the Bloody Rose. So rude. I want to click this video, but I can't because the audio will play through the call. Uh, try for a sec. Uh, if you insist. I'm not hearing anything yet. Oh. Hey, I somehow, somehow magically know your wall, dude. Welcome, this adventurer, really to the wrong. Conjurer's Guild. Here we commune with the Elementals and keep their guidance. Yet, I must confess, the Elementals did not whisper of your... A single red Azima Rose, trusted by Elder. 
We did indeed request an Azima Rose from Elthred, but that you should bring it to us in his stead means that something wonderful has happened. Elthred has long held a grudge against the many adventurers who have passed through Gridania's gates. His beloved flowers are renowned for their beauty, you see. One renowned. And were once so highly coveted by old dawn collectors that they were picked nigh to extinction by fort fortune-seeking foreigners. Yet, if it is peace we desire, we must all look, learn to look beyond misborn. One second. If it is peace we desire, we must all learn to look beyond mistrust born of the past and overcome our prejudices. So has the Elder Seed Seer taught us, so do we live. I doubt it was easy for Elthred to entrust this Azima Rose to you. When he hears we have received it, he will come to know that not all outsiders are deserving of scorn. Truly, it was by the will of the Elementals that you came to us this day. Please accept this as a token of our gratitude. So the game is very self-aware about these uh, groups, especially constantly uh, talking about how the Elementals are to thank for everything. Because um, there was one point where it's like, Please, I need you to go do this. It's super important. And you go and do it and come back. And she's like, ah, oh, it is so great that this was done. I can't believe, or like, it, something, something. I greatly thank. And then it pauses. The elementals for sending you to me. <laughs> Wait, did I, was there a? Oh. The yellow serpent gate okay we are going to go back that's closer i didn't actually do a controlled experiment when i was watching that video just now because my microphone was not muted so it may be that the bug happens if the microphone is muted and i'm playing sound in discord remind me you have headphones on yes okay well do you want to try it again no okay I don't understand why. Nope, try and get it on, please. Thank you very much. That looks like a mature tree right there, doesn't it? Oh, it's a sapling. Never mind. I'm just gonna go up and use my axe on the giant tree. Alright, make a branch. No, I didn't mean to. Yeah, I was gonna say, if we're looking for a mature tree, the, the big one seems the most mature. I guess it's too mature. I, uh, don't need maple branches right now, but I will need some eventually, so it's whatever. Stick it in my materials page. And I'm actually going to move my food to this page because I am running out of room on my materials page, unsurprisingly. You know what I should do? I should make an RPG where, like, every time something happens, it's as obnoxious as possible. No, don't do that. Like, like, like when you level up or get an achievement, you can't see the screen or do anything for, like, ten whole seconds. Only? And the whole thing time. is flashing with particles everywhere. One... Nobody would play it for very long. Two, oh, exactly. It so it's only the first time. Because what I want is a full-on 3D RPG with classic fantasy, you know, game elements yeah. that works like achievement unlocked. Yeah, I was. I I meant more like as a sarcastic parody. Yeah, I just. It, 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 it would be like that one uh, website user interface where. Everything is coded based on annoying things from other websites. So you're you're challenged to fill out a form like with your name and address. You don't have to put in your real name and address, but it's like, you know, you got to fill in all the boxes and you fucking can't because the website is the worst designed website ever. So it's constantly got like pop-ups and the text is unreadable and the thing you're supposed to click doesn't look like the thing you're supposed to click. Uh, yeah, the problem is that it would... Um, uh, that's fine for like a small browser game, but for a... Yeah, actual... yeah, nobody would play it. it, it that's, that's the whole point. It, 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 it would it'd be like a five-minute log game, just yes. torture. And the point would be and it would games be should rein this in. You don't want to put in... You know, no, I, I, I'm bringing it up now because I just saw you level up. I'm not saying that Final Fantasy XIV is a, is a bad offender here. 
No. Like, it's a little more than I would do, but I've seen much, much worse. Like, it's got nothing on No Man's Sky, and th so, there are worse things even than No Man's Sky. Part of the reason it's been so bad with this, um, especially the beginning of mining, is because I have this... Uh, I forget exactly how much it is, but huge XP boost. Oh, yeah, that too. When, when, when you level up a bunch of times in a row, it's worse. And then I have XP boost from the food, and then I had XP boost from being... from rest XP. So I had a lot Honestly, of Honestly, that gives me an idea, like... There should be a level up combo where if you level up twice in five seconds, it does like an extra animation. Yes. <laughs> like definitely. combo level up times two. Look, I'm telling you, a full 3D fantasy RPG that worked like Achievement Unlocked, people would love that. Well, they're kind of there there is there is one kind of like that where it's got it's single player, but it, it looks and feels like an MMO. And it's a short game that it just it does all of the things that MMOs do in order to manipulate you into giving them money, but very transparently. It explains what it's doing at every stage and how that's supposed to work and why they do this. Okay. And the game's like ten minutes long, and um, it's it's uh it, it's very it's soul crushing if you're not already familiar with all this stuff. sound like my idea at all but that is interesting yeah no it's it's completely different it's 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 a it's it's, it's a parody meant to point out the yes. problems in the system well, okay but the achievement game i'm talking about is not meant to be a parody at all well like, i don't think that's that's a to. that's a positive tone parody you know it's 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 a parody but like a celebration rather than criticism i don't think achievement unlocked counts as a parody at all i think achievement unlocked is a Let's take an element of a game that people find really satisfying and make the whole point of the game about that. But it is a, it is, um, the, I the guess. It, it's the completionist, except it, it's a whole yeah, challenge. No, no, I, I, I would, I, I would just consider that part of parody, but it's, it's not a critical parody. That, that is true. That's fair. How goes the gathering effort? Does you forget? Late oh. Okay. There's another game called Press Enter to Load, which is very similar, where the whole game is about loading bars. Yeah, I think it's by the same person. The little elephant. Um, maybe, I don't know, it's been a while. I played so, it like once and I was like, okay, that's cute, and then I put it down and never picked it up again. When she said pots of latex, they're literally pots full of latex. So one, how did I get that much latex from the tree just by swinging my axe? But putting that aside, it does make sense that I could cut a chop in the tree and put a tap in and use the tap to get latex out of it. Once again, that's very, very slow, so I don't know how I did that. But more importantly, you were talking about having your first tool be an axe, and then the first request is pots of latex. Where the hell did the pots come from? They're right there on the shelf. Apparently the tree just has pots in it. No, no, no. no. She gave you pots to put the latex in. Then they would well, you're not going to go trying bag. to gather latex without a pot. Then that, they would be in my quest item bag. They weren't. Yeah, they're not important. Uh, they're yes. like meta items. Precisely ten pots of latex, just as I instructed. You've done well. Latex is easy to find and equally easy to harvest. As such, collecting this stuff is an ideal task for young botanists who are learning their way around a hatchet. This yeah. bag of chips I just opened just has one big, cylindrical, warm, squishy chip. Because it's actually an egg roll. And not not a bag of chips. It is, in fact, a bag of an egg roll. What? Okay. The Chinese food place packed the egg roll and the chips in an identical bag. So I opened one oh, and it oh. was actually the other. Gotcha, gotcha. Yet I did get a bag of needles through. yesterday. It was pretty wild. Swing said tools does not make you a botanist. You must also possess the knowledge to locate the resources you seek. That will be all for me for the present. I urge you to keep honing your senses and skills as a botanist. Gather near, far, and wherever you are, and learn from your experiences. I look forward to seeing you again when you have become better acquainted with our trade. Till then, I bid you happy gathering. Okay, um... Yeah, oh, it's very... Something to gather. One, which outfit looks better? This one? Or... That one. 
I, they seem like the same, but I like blue. Okay, cool. I kind of like the blue one better, too. Alright, so you are going to go in my two-cell spot. And mining, there's also... Okay, good. Recommended gear. Yep, 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 yep. Good. Okay, to the spaceport. Um, okay, and then thing two, you were saying a bag of beetles? That's what I thought I that might catch your attention. A bag of beetles. That's all I heard. Well, as I was talking about before, I ran out, so I had to order more. And I thought they'd come in a box, but I got home and I found this, there was this package at my door. It was, it was one of those bubble wrap bags, and I opened it up, and inside was just a big plastic zipper bag full of needles. I'm so like, a, that's a this is the wrong type of package for shipping needles. A plastic bag in plastic wrap full of sharp metal things. Yeah, and like, so yes, they are all sense. individually packaged with little caps on them, but like, still, oh. it's a bag of needles. Whose idea was this? Nah, if they're individually packaged, that's fine. I would still is, not put them in a bag. It is wild that they individually capped and protected a bunch of needles. Yeah, That's like I bizarre. ordered 50 of them, so I thought... They I guess they had some too. poor underpaid person count out 50 needles and put them in a bag. Yeah, they should, they should be in a tube. A tube? Do they come in a tube? Yeah, there should be like a hard plastic tube. I, I'm not saying they do. I'm just saying if you're going to get a, a bulk needles, there should be a hard plastic tube that they make that has 50 needles dropped into it. Yeah. And they should have a little or, machine. Or cardboard box out. would also work. They should have a little machine that can count out needles like coin, uh, coin uh, sorters. Oh, no, not like little sewing needles. No, I. why would you think I would need 50 of those? I don't know. You say needle, that's what I think of. No, they're like, they're syringes. They're like, they're, they're, they're big things. They got plastic caps. You, you know what I'm talking about. Just you have the, these. Uh, just the, just the, just the. Oh, no, they're all in one, they're one piece. I, I saved money by getting them all. It's, it's a single thing that's a syringe with the pointy part attached. Like the, the plastic tube with the pointy part? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So there's no, like, taking it apart and putting it back together. Beautiful. And it's cheaper. Are you able to recycle? I, I don't like. Do they? I, I'll try. I don't know if they'll get recycled. In fact, I don't. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to recycle needles because they're pointy and like the recycling people could pick them up and then get stabbed. And, you know, ask you the, which... the AIDS will spontaneously generate on the needles. I would ask you which crafting job I should unlock first, but I've already decided. You should craft uh, iron armor. That is, a, that, well, I won't be able to craft iron armor yet, but that is the job I'm going to be unlocking first, yes. Where am I? Oh, side quest. What level? Yep. All right, what's my lowest level job? It is the worst name. Like, I can't, I don't know how long it's been since I've seen a name worse than that. Her name? Her proper first name is... That's not even a keyboard smash. That's a sneeze. Dojby. Someone someone sneezed. Dojby. Uh, she's from the S clan. And her name is Dojby. And I could look up what exactly that means, but I don't know offhand. There is a no, hang on. I've got some pepper here. A lot of the names in this game. Um, no, I'm, I, I've got some pepper here. I'm going to demonstrate the proper pronunciation of that text. You sniffing it and sneezing? I still... <laughs> That was not. That didn't sound like it at all. But okay. That uh, was a fake sneeze. Uh, I kind of failed. Girl, 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 theater. Um. Well, I should probably do it in the order. Yeah, I should do it in this order. Uh, rogue arcanist. No, that's too much effort. Still recommended gear. Nope. I have a shield now. These days, poor Beta runs so busy looking after others, he hasn't been able to look after himself. He deserves something for his efforts. Whenever he's in his cups and starts speaking of the old days, he never fails to mention Aurelia. Seems he and his mates used to eat the creatures on occasion. 
It's obvious uh, he still has fond memories of that life, so I'm thinking a few Aurelia umbrellas, um, umbrellas, Aurelia umbrellas might be something he'd appreciate. Could you help me by procuring four of them? If you're willing to help, speak with Clindrail by the aft castle. She knows where various wild beasts congregate. Lady Isn't that a kind of jellyfish? Yep. Humans can't eat jellyfish. Yep. That's like, there's like two things in the world that humans can't eat, which are so, jellyfish and wood. So why this uh, uh, pirate and his buddies, former pirate and his buddies used to eat jellyfish heads, I don't know. Yeah, that's a bad idea. That's like drinking seawater. You, you get less than no nutrition doing that. Like, Baderon you actually, actually lose nutrients. Baderon actually likes Aurelia umbrellas? God, I never even considered trying to eat one of those foul things. Nevertheless, Don't. it's Aurelia, you see. You ought to find plenty by the river just past the Tempest Gate to the east. Thank you. It's 96% water. Most of the rest is mucus and poison. I'm really looking forward to getting my chocobo. Game, play the background music. What's wrong with you? It's sending me to the lower level. <laughs> but I can just. <laughs> there we go. This is the <laughs> Am I helping? <laughs> Switching to uh, <laughs> 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 That is being a little too loud and a little too consistent. It's going to get a little annoying. So if you just keep it quieter, it's fine. What level is my MSQ? 15. Yeah, I still got a ways to go before I get my Chocobo. I think that's a level like. 20, 22, something like that. Oh, I gotta pop my hey, come watch the stream message. Forgot to do that in Google. Hey, Dawn. come watch the stream. Hey! You two should kiss. <laughs> hey, you guys. It's a different reference. I don't even know what it's from. Hey, you guys. Yeah, what's that one? The Queenies. It's like a super old reference. The what? The Goonies. Oh, really? Weird. Yeah. I don't know how I know it then. Probably from Arl Knots. Because they were like 10 guaranteed improvements to Transformers Age of Extinction. Make all of Bumblebee's voice lines quotes from the Goonies. <laughs> Maybe then, because you probably showed that to me. All right, you're gonna let me choose and not automatically do MSQ, right? Because I don't really want to do MSQ at all. There we go. So Doge B said an adventurer might be dropping by to deliver something special. At you, lass. A soft gelatinous body of an Aurelia, a delicacy in author where it is dried, then sliced and mixed with oil of sesame and dragon peppers. Now that makes sense. Now, do you know if that's an actual way people prepare food? I'm guessing it is because I don't think they would have it in here otherwise, but. Huh? Uh, but, but, pay attention. The soft gelatinous body of an Aurelia, a delicacy in author where it is dried, then sliced and mixed with oil of sesame and dragon peppers. News to me. I've never heard of that. 
But any, in any case. I was under the impression nobody ate jellyfish. Well, here you go. Ah, hell's last. You didn't have to go to all this trouble. <laughs> this god's damned smell. I've ate an Aureli umbrella since I was a sellsword. It's only the nastiest shit I ever put in your mouth. We tried sprinkling it with salt and cooking it over a campfire. It's still a little better than chewing on driftwood. Try it for yourself, last. You'll see what I mean. Uh, no. N no, thank you. I'm good. Yeah, it's better than driftwood, probably. But d you shouldn't eat that either. I mean, he did say little better than driftwood. Yeah, like, um, don't... What? Did you see... If you had... If all you had to eat was jellyfish and driftwood, you had nothing to eat. Yes, exactly. Alright, now here I will ask, should I learn smithing or armor making first? Uh, armor smithing. It's one or the other. Making. It's one or the other. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, fine. I'll just pick one. Welcome, welcome. What brings you to the blacksmith skill? Uh, uh, fine. What is blacksmithing? Gotta go talk to this person. Uh, so. Unless you're blind and deaf, I presume you wandered into a forge of your own accord. Un uh, wandered into our forge of your own accord. Drawn by Zundite. the song of our smithy's hammers, no doubt. In these hallowed halls, Limsa's finest pound metal into all manner of tools and weapons. When I say Limsa's, I mean the whole bloody realms. Make no mistake, you need more than the big arm to join our ranks. But if you've got iron in your veins and the builder's blessings, speak up. Join the blacksmith's guild. Ha! Well, you're not short on confidence. Do you truly know what you're getting into yourself into here, lass? Ours is a trade born of blood and brine. For as long as pirates have sailed the Rotano, smitties have forged their weapons and fitted out their ships from keel to cannon. Of course, till sea swallows all, ain't just an idle saying. Till sea swallows all! Brinally threw even the stoutest iron given time, and our forebears long struggled to forge more rust resistant alloys. Luckily for us, the Smitties of Eld were a determined bunch, clever too. So when they learned that the Kobolds knew something in advanced metallurgy, the Smitties set out to make it their own. Ah, yes, take the natives and steal all of their skills, and then force them out of their own land. That is uh, a rather surprising element of the overarching plot of this game is that you start off with several of the groups being kind of racist and terrible towards some of what they call the beast tribes and then over time they actually stop calling them beast tribes and even like the leader of the pirate town who really hates two of them ends up being like okay yeah maybe we should work with them instead they're, they're not all bad <laughs> luckily for uh yep thanks to the kobold's wisdom which they generously gifted us with only the merest hint of pirately prompted cough cough the Mints and Smithen came on leaps and bounds. It wasn't long before the Gridanians and Uldaz started iron our knowledge, iron our knowledge like we did the Kobolds, though. And so, some 150 odd years ago, two particularly forward-thinking men named Theor Naldi and Bryce, v Bryce Vimelli had the bright idea of establishing a respectable business. Being fair-minded fellows, they'd sell their wares to anyone who had the coin, pirates and foreigners included. When folks weren't inclined to pay, we made sure to remind them we hadn't completely forsaken our pirate ways. Times have changed, though. We're a wee bit more willing to share our wisdom these days. The company's been running the Blacksmiths and Armorers Guilds for years now, but from any soul with the necessary talent and will to work. As to whether you got enough of either, uh, that's for the Forge Master to decide. Speak to me when you're ready to present yourself to him. Let's do it. So what'll it be? Reckon you got what it takes to train with the best god's damn blacksmiths in the realm? Ha! Ah, that's the spirit. If you'd taken any longer to decide, I'd have told you to bugger off no matter what you said. Can't have half-arsed adventures wasting Forge Master Berthale's precious time, see? He's got a lot of irons in the fire. Good job. That's why me and the other lads make a point to keep it idlers, imbeciles, and the otherwise unqualified from getting in his way. Andy anyway, Rugg, it's time you went and paid your respects to the man. He's the one over yonder making a face like he's carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. Wait, was that a side quest? I'll finish this first. About time Randolph sent me a new... <clears throat> nope, no nope, wrong quest. About time Randolph sent me a new recruit. Ah, it's been too long. <clears throat> I'm Brithale, Forge Master of the Blacksmith's Guild. If you're aiming to become a smitty, word of the... So, I gotta give him his accent. If you're aiming to become a smitty, word of the name, it would be a great pleasure to educate you on the finer points of the craft. 
Oh, and the rest of these sour-faced bastards will tell you it's hard, grueling work fit only for the best and brightest. But I say put a hammer in the hands of the willing to see what happens. What do you say then, lass? Will you swing a hammer for old Brithale? Hell yeah. Ha! I knew I liked you the moment I set eyes on you. Uh, uh what, what'd you say your name was again? Mana Nun. Name fit for a hero if I ever I heard one. In fact, I reckon I did hear it in a bard's song once. It was that poor sod cursing his cups at the wench. Nah, don't matter if it was saving the world or cuckolding your husband. It's time to forge. Oh, I think I heard that song. Pounding up new. It went like. Do, 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 do. Manana. <laughs> Anyways, you can trust <laughs> Old Brithale to help you do it. There I go, putting the cart before the joke about. Here, lass, take this cross bean hammer. This me without a hammer is like me without a drink. Bloody useless. Well, don't just stand there gawping at her. Take her in your hands. Have a few practice swings. Whatever you fancy. It's all yours now. What I wouldn't give to be you right now, lass. Spinny never forgets his first hammer. <laughs> So a horse walks into a bar, and the bartender says, uh, "Why the long face?" And, uh, and and the horse is like, "What?" Well, the the bartender's like, like, "Wow, that's a lot of beer you're drinking." And, and are you an alcoholic? And the horse is like, "I don't think I am," and then vanishes and then in a puff of logic. That's so dumb. Well, you might have guessed that it was a, it was a joke about the the quote attributed to Descartes, which is, uh, oh, I think, I therefore I am. I, I could have explained that at the beginning. <laughs> that would be putting Descartes before the horse. There we go. I knew I'd heard that one before. <laughs> yep. It's so fucking. It's so I, much I restraint did. not to joke snipe that. I love when the I love the the one two punch when when there's two punch lines in the joke. What's well, the yeah, difference? I, Hold on, I, I won't try to tell it right now, mostly because I don't remember how it goes well enough, but also because it's really long, and I'm you know be you know reading NPC dialogue. But the jokes. Are you the story of the yellow daisy? Re, no, you are not doing. I was just thinking about that earlier when you were like, I forgot this game is a visual novel, and I'm like, we well, don't always have to tell full long story. Anyway, um, yeah. Exactly. The guy's telling you the entire history of the like gardeners guild or whatever. Every guild tells you their whole history. Yeah. Um. That's why it's so funny when Fafucha is like, I assume he told you about the history of our guild? Cool. Then I'll continue from where he left off. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, the jo jokes that are, you tell a full joke that's not super long, but it's a bit, yep. and it ends with something that sounds vaguely like it's supposed to be a punchline, but isn't really that funny. And then you, yeah. let, you let other people tell another one or two jokes, and then you tell another one, and the punchline for that one is it finishes. Oh the first yeah, one. I forgot what that one was, <laughs> but so yeah. I, I heard two of them, but the one that I would tell was about the old couple, and they toss the cat out the window, and then the guy laying bricks, and he keeps tossing the bricks up in the air, and the, for the final brick, it's the cat instead. But there's another one where the oh, guy's like fishing, man. and he gets he gets uh, a clam, and inside is the diamond ring from the previous joke. But I don't remember that. I remember that one even less. Okay, one one sec. Before you continue your thing, I thought there is a beautiful sight. I'll never forget, Smitty's hammer. Oh, that was saying. Friends will betray you, lovers will leave you, but you'll ne your, your hammer will never do you no wrong. God, seeing you standing there reminds me of a less ale sodden, more lady-shaped version of a younger self. But onto your task. Ah, uh, see, more lady-shaped version. My head cannon is this person's trance. Uh, th there's like one or two other reasons I don't remember that, but that's the first one. But onto your task. We need a congregation of soft-handed scholarlies here. Smitty's learned by doing. Try your hand at making a bronze ingot. And Smitty works with her salt, gotta master the fundamentals, and you can't get more fundamental than that. It ain't complicated. Bronze is just copper and tin melted down and mixed together. So you'll be needing ah, that's it. Copper and tin ore. And seeing as most folks yeah. don't stuff like that round without round him, round with them without a reason. Smith Hammer. Yes, that's his name. Smith Hammer. Outside can provide you with stuff. For a price that is. The lad can't sell you though, is the fire shell. Fire shard you'll need. Ah, it ain't complicated, but I don't mean it's easy. You need to melt the metals after all, and to do that, you need to get them hotter than a bombard's backside. And that's all there is to it. You can, can handle it less. Got you. Okay, go ahead. If you reverse the second half of his name, his name is Brit Leah, which is two girls' names. Interesting. I mean, Brit by itself. What's the difference British. between a fish, a piano, and a puddle of glue. You can tune a fish, but you can't tune a piano. <laughs> Excuse me, what? And then you reply, 
what I'm supposed to reply with. You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. You got it backward. I thought you would get stuck on the glue part. Oh, I'll bet that clever turnaround there. <laughs> good, 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 uh, fair play. Uh, did, did you seriously get it backward on purpose? Because that was, that was very smooth. You'll never know. No, I want to know things. Can I come over there with a pickaxe and mine your brain? Now, given how this game works, you would need a scythe for that. How I mine for fish, Joe. Oh! The bag is Cheetos Puffs. Hey. Hey, Tim. Hey. Look Hi. At my, look at my crafting right now. Yep. I have one skill. <laughs> I can't make You'll this get there. quality. It's so bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, correct. You are a level one blacksmith. You cannot make high quality stuff yet. It's so unfair. Wait, what did I just unlock? Actually, I don't think I unlocked it. Level up. Yeah, I didn't unlock anything yet. Oh, so I was giggling earlier because he's talking about the hammer and how it will never do you any wrong. And I'm like, stapler son. Yes. Oh, you don't remember the stapler son video? The, the one where, oh, they fuck it. No, no, no. It was, okay, it was from okay. the honors. She's, she's narrating a manga panel. I don't know where this manga panel came from or if it's even real, but. What are you doing, step stapler? This little girl, is, yeah, it's, it's, it's like. I, I I need to I need to attach these pieces of paper together. And uh, luckily I have stapler son to help. Choo! Thanks, stapler son. And then I guess like later later she fucks up and 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 I think hurts herself with the stapler and, she, and and it's like oh stapler son you fucking asshole. Fuck fuck fuck. Okay. I just want to say for the record, the your, is, and, and your mic like, gating self-censored you. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> 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 you're all right, lass. Better than that, even. Sure you ain't done this before? Because the Warrior of Light is ridiculously good at everything they ever do. Sure you ain't done this before? Because honestly, this ain't what you'd expect from a venture fresh off the street. I think you might be a bleeding natural, lass. Takes just the right balance of metals to produce bronze suitable You're for weapons natural and tools. Bleeding. Okay, see, this is my point. It takes just the right balance of metals to produce bronze suitable for weapons and tools. So my instruction to you was go get some copper and tin and make an ingot. That is how I am teaching you to forge, is telling you go do this. <laughs> it... Yeah. This game yeah. is not great about actually teaching, but it's particularly bad about the crafting ones. So presumably he gave you a formula since you knew how much of each material to put in. Yeah, he gives and you that formula is just how you make this stuff in the first place. Remember the yeah, blacksmithing no, on, mini game from? So yes, he gives you a book with the formula. So you sit down, you pull out your anvil, which he also didn't give you, but that's fine. It's a magical anvil. Who cares? You pull out your anvil. You somehow use the fire shard with it. Let's just pretend we know how to do that. And then you have tin and copper, and you are going to combine them and shape it into an ingot. All of that is stuff that maybe you could figure out on yourself. But the one piece that's missing is how to actually turn the tin and copper ore into the metal. The thing that you need to learn to do smithing. And no one teaches you how to do that. I mean, clearly yep. you just hit it with your hammer a few times and the metal comes out yeah, of the arm. Clearly you yeah. open the menu Apparently. and you click craft. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, you were saying. Remember the, the smithing mini game from Sword Art Online Abridged? That was like unironically better than how most games do it. No, In fact, I don't know of any game that does blacksmithing better than that, which is remember. saying something about the industry. What was it? 
Uh, it was it was kind of like Guitar Hero. One of the NPCs was was or no no it wasn't an NPC it was just another person. One, what, one of the side characters was crafting a new sword for Kirito, and uh, they they made her play a, like a mini game that was kind of like Guitar Hero with like striking with the hammer in the right place at the right time and had like rock music playing and that I kind of get. The game, the game would still need to like tell you what to do, but. It doesn't need yeah, to. It, yeah, it, just needs, but... it just needs to cut away for a moment of having the person be like, all right, blah, blah, blah. Cuts away for a moment, comes yeah. back. Or it should be like, I'm giving you this book that explains how to do it, except for you, the book is just the formula. It's just the menu part. Yeah, yeah. Try, trying to trying to play it off as an instruction book maybe would help, but... Right, it would help a little bit. Certainly, breaking immersion and the fourth wall cost them less in terms of effort and player engagement and money than actually making a smithing mini game for the tiny fraction of players that are actually going to use it. This is a game that story locks literally everything. They came out with a Fall Guys crossover, and in order to uh -huh. do the Fall Guys crossover, you have to go talk to the person, and they, granted it's not very long, but they explain this very short story about how these guys showed up out of nowhere, and then the leader of the, of the, uh, oh. The gold saucer showed up, and he managed to, you know, learn how to communicate with them. And they really like doing this stuff, so he set up a whole game for them. And it's like, even that is a little bit story locked. And anyway, it's whatever. Yeah, uh, they put effort in where it's going to turn into money. That they 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 probably calculated that investing effort into the smithing mechanic was not worth it. That's not why. That's not why at all. It's because Yoshi P, like many other, uh, I think it's pretty much always Japanese game creators, uh, has very strong opinions about some things. And one of them, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's Yoshi P, uh, is very strongly of the opinion that in order for players to do something in the game, there needs to be like an in-world reason for them to do it in the game. Oh yeah, no, I can get behind that. Okay, it's just, it sounds like they put more effort into the Fall Guys backstory than they did into the smithing mechanics. No. The mechanics, maybe, but not the story. Anyway, one, one second. But they saying it, you've made me last. It's on par with them as our veterans produce. You could take this down to Hawker's Alley and find a buyer in no time. You're about to watch an over oh, yet. See, it is no high quality. Ah, you've got talent, lass, but don't let it go to your head. I've seen plenty of folk get drunk on early success, only to puke their guts up later because they forgot the talent's worth bugger all without hard work and dedication. So I tell you what, it's simple looks for tasty. now, lass. Practice the fundamentals so you can smelt bronze in your sleep. When you gain the kind of confidence that only comes with experience, come back and I'll teach you something new. So, um, yeah, it's... I want to eat it. It's not high quality for a veteran. It's normal quality for a veteran. And he's right, I could go sell it very easily. But as you'll see with many other crafting guild masters, he's just, like, particularly complimentary. When you do your first craft for most of the guild masters, they're like... This isn't bad. This is okay. Yeah. And then there's one guild master who's like, "It's okay, this work for a noob." Yeah, there, there's one person who's like, "This is shit," but you're a noob, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> exactly. Which is a, really the same thing. Hmm? And then there's another one who's just a tiny robot who's like, "This is worse than actual shit." And the guild master's like, "No, don't listen to him." Yeah, the guild master's <laughs> like, "Wow, this isn't bad." And the robot's like, "What are you talking about? This is garbage." Anyway, um, are you in need of some trifling tasks to pass the time? Then I have just the job for you. Badoron is offering a reward to any adventurer who slays at least five dwarf rats. There's no shortage of the pests lurking outside the Tempest Gate, so you should hurry and take advantage of this opportunity. Can do. Oh, you are a cat, girl. That's racist. Yeah, I, I, for some reason, being racist against cats just doesn't seem all that wrong to me. Wow, that's unapologetically racist. It's even worse. Because I feel like, I feel like if we asked cats, they'd probably be racist. <laughs> now, if someday I am proven wrong, if someday people commune with cats and determine that cats are not in fact racist, I will welcome that future. But my hunch is that cats are racist. They're probably so cats are not racist against people, and here's why. Studies have shown cats tend to think of people as large, hairless cats. Yeah, I, I read about that one, too. I think that's an oversimplification. Hold on, yeah, I have a comment on that one. So, cats treat humans like humans treat cats. 
Most humans treat cats like they're small dumb humans. That's why we give them names and like tell oh, them to yeah. stop doing things. Yeah, cats. I, I think what's actually going on is cats see other cats as people, like as equivalent to themselves, you know, thinking beings and rational agents, right? Right. And they see humans as also people. Yeah. So it's not like they think of us as cats in the sense that we're cats. They, but they, they think of, you know. It's like if cats if cats had a legal system, they would consider humans cats for legal purposes. In all fairness, it's not just cats that do that. They do it in some ways that yeah. others don't, but dogs do it too. I That's suspect a lot of animals do that. Yeah. Like there's that one video where like the elephant's trying to cross a field and it sees a fence and like carefully walks over the fence. There's no reason like it doesn't need to walk over the fence. It could walk the right through the fence. It would have no effect on the elephant. But the elephant knows what the fence is and that it's important to someone and it respects them. Animals are cool. Ah, so you slew a few rats. Good on you, lass. The bloke, this bloke comes through the other day and plops this huge sack of the size of a bleeding goobo on the counter, saying any man with slaves rats can have something from the fence. When I inquire as to why, all he says is the damn noise they make when scurrying about is driving him insane. He asked me, though, he was already a bit touched. So he tells me the poor lad will never find peace. I wonder if that's the mosquito guy. The guy was like, I can't stand the bugs. Please get rid of me. Alright, and then there's a story that ele that octopus, you know, where somebody gave the octopus bad shrimp, and so the octopus just just casually escaped yes. its tank, followed the guy, the guy all the way to the night watch office, and threw it at him. Yep, I think I told you that story. Like, yeah, the octopus definitely saw the person as a person. As, as an octopus in the person sense, you know. And there's like that other one, like where like the person's waving at the octopus, and the octopus starts wiggling a tentacle in response. Like that—that hey, that requires that some thought. Like it doesn't understand what waving is, but it's like you have some kind of limb thing. I have a limb thing. I'll wiggle it back. It's at you. possible it does, but like you know, it—it it translated the gesture onto its own body shape, which yes. indicates significant amounts of mental power. Okay, while I read this, you should go look up whether octopi recognize themselves in mirrors. It's I think I already know this one, but I, I can it's, check. It's well that you find the din inviting. The Armor's Guild is not the place for quiet reverie. The clang, the clang of metal striking mute, the clang of metal striking metal is music to your ears. May have you the spirit of a shipwreck. Are you in mind to join our guild? Take it from me, last. There's no greater joy than working a shapeless lump of iron into a shining breastplate with your own hands. What say you? Then? Well said, last. I um. I regret doing this. What? The entire first page of results. Every single result is a link to buy a mirror do that's decorated to look like an octopus. That's pretty silly. Now we should cover a bit of guild history. Wait, wait, no, I found I found some hours. videos. Okay. The armor's craft is an offshoot of blacksmith. Time was when armors and smithies were one and the same. But as the years trickled by, the techniques for working sheet metal into armor plates became a specialized trade. And the smithies who showed uncommon skill and passion for this trade earned themselves the title of armor. Now, as you can probably imagine, the skills nece for necessary for making armor are also needed for shipbuilding. Building ships is a bit harder than knocking out simple helms, which led to those armorers who were good enough to work on boats claiming the title shipwright. Of course, it was one thing calling armorers blacksmiths and shipwrights armorers, but it was quite another calling shipwrights blacksmiths. Was building a ship and making a hatchet couldn't be more different. It seemed as though a line needed drawn, seeing as how Limsa Lamensa was built on the strength of her navy, you can imagine why the armors chose to cut ties with the smithies and establish a guild of their own. As for the smithies, well, the whole notion of an independent armors guild never did sit well with them. There's been a fair old rivalry between our two factions ever since. Always trying to outdo each other, we are. Which is why we're ever on the lookout for new talent to help us keep the smitty bastards in their place. All you need to do is impress the Forge Master and we can start you on your train. Be warned, Forgemaster's Naz's tongue could strip the scales off a fish back at 40 paces. Saying that, you won't find a fair mistress this side of the Strait of Morlthorpe. Let me know when you muster the courage to speak with her, and I'll see to the rest. Your mind is made up? You ready to throw your lot in with us armors? Yeah. Then it's time you made yourself known to the Forgemaster. That's no empty title, by the way. Naz is a renowned shipwright, one of the finest crafters in Limsa Lamensa. Head outside, and you'll find her blistering the skins of our newest initiates. Alright, do you have a follow-up? Not yet, I take. 
Another aspiring armor, are you? Welcome. I am Inaz, a forge master of this guild. I take... No, hang on. What voice should I be in for her? I take it, Guanacos, explain to you the history and nature of our craft. Good. I have little to add on that front, save this. The life of an armorer is not an easy one. Day after day, you will pit flesh and blood against iron and flame. Without a passion for the forge, you will fail. The passion alone would not make an armorer of you. To truly master this craft, you must be possessed of a will as unyielding as the metals you work. Knowing what lies before you, have you the fortitude to persevere? Hell yeah! Ha! So you have no fear of hard work! That is well. See your request to join the guild approved. But if you ever give me aught less than your best, you will be out the door before you realize my boot is connected with your backside. Are we clear on that? Good. Now that we understand each other, let us begin with the basics. What is your name? Mana. Very well, Mana. This tool is called the Doming Hammer. Here, grip it firmly. Note its weight. Let me know when you feel comfortable within your hand. I'll tell you if you're holding it properly. Bong. I forgot to do the bong. Dang it. Bong. Okay, apparently there's some anecdotal accounts of octopi um, reacting to reflections in mirrors. But, um, yeah. I can't find any actual study on this. Like, there's a whole Wikipedia article here about the mirror test and all the different animals they've used. And apparently nobody's tried this on an octopus. I think the consensus there is nobody's uh, thought it was worth doing. Humans probably aren't on that octopus not on that list either. Hmm. You know, I don't see humans on the list. It has not been scientifically proven that humans can understand mirrors. Yeah, it seems it, like a it, hole it in our has, science. It definitely has, though. <laughs> because we've done tests on how, like, how smart babies are when they can understand stuff like that. It's interesting. They successfully got a cleaner wrasse to, to pass the mirror test, but several species of monkeys, pandas, and sea lions failed. Okay, well, there are animals. Uh, well, there's at least one animal where the leading suspicion for why it was not reacting to itself in the mirror was because it didn't fucking care. Yeah. I think it was ravens. But I'm like, the cleaner wrasse? That, that, that one was a surprise. Ah, yes. If I didn't know better, I think, you're, I think you were an armor, mana. Of course, I do know better. So you craft something with that hammer of yours, you look like a babe with rattle teeth. I have no intention of mothering you. Make no mistake, I mean to shape you into an artisan, however hard I have to pound. Kinky. Save your sweat for the forge, lass. I don't expect you to fashion full suits of plate on your first day. Just pay close attention to my instructions, be diligent your work, the skill will come in due time. Now, let's be about your first lesson, shall we? I want you to take up your hammer and make me a bronze ingot. <laughs> Same thing. A mundane task I grant you, but one which every armor must master. Bronze, you see, is the most basic material of the craft. Bronze ingots are its building blocks. It's not the strongest of alloys, of course, but that's the very quality that makes bronze so easy to shape, and the metal of choice for a novice armor. To forge your ingot, you'll need to procure two, cut, two chunks of copper ore, a chunk of tin ore, and a knife shard. Pardon me. The ore can be purchased from so so Sormwib. Swarm. 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 Yeah, because it's probably rim. Rim? No, hang on. Swear I think it's I think it's three syllables. Swammer rib. Swammer rib. Here at the guild. The ice shard got to find on your own. Well, you're waiting for me to swing your arm for you. You may have you would have me swing my boot. Yeah, because it's it's gotta be swear swarmer with. Based on how they how uh Seawolf Row names work. Okay, um one thing I forgot. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. That's what that does, right? Good. Okay, I need... The MSR test has been criticized because it may result in false negative findings. That's fair. Yep. Definitely fair. XP on. I, I'm sorry. That, 
Did that happen with smithing too? What? So my XP boost from being on this world, being on this data center, right? Is enough by itself, because I currently do not have any bonus rest XP and I do not have food on. It is enough by itself to take me from level one to level four with a single bronze ingot. I found the thing you were talking about. They tested three elephants and they found that one of them passed the test and the other didn't, but, but displayed other behaviors that suggested self-recognition. So they're guessing that they just the 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 spot was not important enough for them to do anything about it. Yeah, they saw themselves in a mirror and were just like, "Yeah, like it just it just didn't stand out to them." Anyway, got your answer. Where's uh, blah blah blah? Pretty sure only the first level quest am I actually buying things for. Completed your first task, have you? Well, then let's have a look at this ingot. Hmm. So, this is the sort of quality I can expect from you, is it? For a novice armor, this is excellent work. Excellent. Well done, mana. The key to making good bronze is judging the ratio of copper to tin. With too much tin, the alloy becomes harder, but also more brittle. Not the sort of material you want for picking your vital organs. Lest you forget, quality is a matter of life and death, life and death in our craft. That is why we teach our initiates the ideal metallurgic composition of every item we forge. Not that all are quick to learn. There are some who seem destined to produce mediocre results, however painstaking the processes are explained. Thank the builder you're not one of them, at least to say that your ingot would fetch a decent price in the markets. But do not let this first success make you complacent. A single bad helm will lose you more trust than a hundred good ones will win. Because bad armor means dead men. It's not enough that your work be good, it must needs to be consistently good. And achieving that consistency, consistency requires discipline and long hours of crafting the same item over and over, again and again. For you, this means a mountain of bronze ingots. Bronze ingots in your dreams. Bronze ingots until the process is so ingrained that you wake up and find that your pillow is an ingot you made in your sleep. When you feel you've learned all you can from forging bronze ingots, seek me out and I'll find you something else to craft. May the builder guide your hand, mana. Da -da -da. Uh, you were here for some of this discussion. Nothing too. but bronze ingots until you're ready to level up. Okay, so one more bronze ingot. Yeah. You were here for this discussion in my past life. Uh, was... Was my plan to craft everything... <sighs> okay, hmm. remind me. At level 4, am I allowed to craft a level 5 item? Um... It's... It's... Yeah, because I can't craft... I can craft anything up to 5 levels higher than me. There we go. Because I can't, I'm not allowed to craft these. That's why they're grayed out. Okay. So, should I ah. complete the level one quests and then craft all the gear up to level five? Or, nah, it's probably smarter to wait until I do the level five quests for everything and then craft the gear up to level five. That's probably smarter. So, I, I tried the... doing that myself when I first started the game, and I tried to gather everything that I needed to do for it myself. And I ran into a specific problem with Culinarian. The Rollenberry Tart, I believe, which yes. is like a level 5, level 10 recipe for Culinarian, relies on the Rollenberry, which is a level 50 gather. Yeah, that, that I won't worry about. If I can't buy it from a shop and I can't gather it yet, uh, then I won't worry about it. Because theoretically, I could buy it from Marketplace, except Mana doesn't understand Marketplaces. Yeah, at that point, I didn't have a subscription, so I didn't understand marketplaces either. Okay, we're off to the culinary guild. I found a bit about Octopi at the bottom. Uh, it says they oriented towards their image in the mirror, but there was no observable difference in behavior. And... Then there is a whole section about humans. They have, in fact, tested this on humans. They found that um, by 20 months old, 65% of humans are able to pass the test. Nice. It doesn't say whether they've tested people older than 24 months, though. By 24 years, it goes as high as 90%. If it says by if it says 20 like, months. Uh, if we... Uh, in 2012, somebody tried to make a robot do it. Yeah, I don't think they were ready for that in 2012. But 
you could absolutely make a robot that would process itself. You could make a robot that might, yeah, um, might create the illusion of passing the mirror test. Oh, it doesn't understand the mirror test, but it can pass it. Yeah, I, th I think the mirror test would be invalid on that robot. I think part of the reason, that I suspect part of the reason why it's so hard to test octopi on the mirror test is fixturing. With vertebrate animals, you can fix them in place and then put a mirror in front of them and do something behind them and see if they recognize that it's happening behind them. Um, ah, octopi are not vertebrates, test. and if you try to put them in a clamp, they're just going to squirm out of it. Yeah, uh, the one the one I was reading about, the procedure was anesthetize the subject, make it unconscious, then put a spot of something on the subject in a place that the subject can't normally see, and then put the mirror there and wait for the subject to wake up and find out, does the animal behave differently, you know, with regard to the mirror and with regard to the spot? Apparently, they, they tried this on a fish and uh, the, the cleaner wrasse, and they found that if they attach something to the fish that looks like a parasite, the fish behaves mostly normally, but when it notices itself in the mirror, spends time examining at the mirror, and then attempts to remove the object. From itself or from the mirror? Uh, from itself. It was uncertain the first time they ran the experiment, but then they ran it with more and uh, concluded that the, the, the fish had, in fact, figured out that there was something on itself. Right, because if it was just... Recognizing Again, with the octopus, the problem is that, one, it's an invertebrate, and there is no part of its body it can't normally see, except maybe its beak. Yeah. And two, it uh, has chromatophores, so changing color while it's asleep probably isn't unusual for it. Yeah, but it can't change back. That would be strange. Well, only if it has a need to try to change that. Well, maybe. I don't know. I, just, I feel like if I had the ability to change color and I found a discoloration on my skin, I'd probably, you know, try to change it first and then be suspicious that that part doesn't follow. Okay, but one, you're not an octopus. And two... Yeah. We're assuming also that you have had other discolorations of your skin every time you've woken up for the past 20 years, and... So, the octopus can control it. So, if there's suddenly a part it can't control, that's out of the ordinary. Right, but it would have to try to control it first to realize it can't control it. Hmm. The assumption here is that it cares. Perhaps, yeah. All right, one sec. I beg your pardons, good madam. This is the Culinarian Guild. If you're, if you're here to dine at the Bismarck, one of our waiters will be along shortly to show you to your... Oh, you're not a patron. Uh, might I assume, then, that you wish to become a culinarian? If so, I wholeheartedly recommend you to join the Culinarian Guild, where one may learn the culinary arts under the finest chefs in all the realm. What say you? Wonderful. Without further ado, I shall acquaint you with the history of our guild. As you are doubtless aware, Limsa Laminsa has long been the guest gastronomic capital of Eorzea. The city's rich culinary tradition is the product of a unique combination of factors. The first is our proximity to the fertile lands and plentiful seas of Vilbrand, which have ever yielded bounteous produce. The second is our standing as the realm's foremost trading port, which grants us access not only to exotic ingredients from faraway shores, but also to foreign merchants versed in their use. We are, in short, the beneficiaries of culinary knowledge from every corner of the world. Until recently, knowledge of this kind was passed on solely through the word of mouth. And through the word of mouth and was therefore susceptible to corruption and loss, but that all changed when one man made it his mission to catalog every recipe of note. His name was Admiral Gulskiff Feldwinson, also known as Mask Weaver. The man's love of fine cuisine was such that, at sea, he would regularly spend as much time preparing meals in the galley as giving commands on the bridge. It was none other than he who founded the Culinarian's Guild and codified cooking methodology. Today, the, the Guild carries on Feldwinson's legacy, though the scope of our endeavors has expanded significantly. Not content with simply preserving existing recipes, we labor to tirelessly devise we labor tirelessly to devise wholly novel culinary creations with which to delight the senses. To this end, our doors are open to folk from all walks of life, including adventurers such as your good self. One may liken our guild to a great pot of stew, each member to an ingredient imparting a unique flavor. 
As with every dish, however, adding ingredients willy-nilly is certain to spoil the taste. Or you may take your place in the pot, you must be deemed a worthwhile addition by Guildmaster Lingsa, a man whose passion for cookie, cookery burns hotter than any oven. Before troubling him, I must warn you that ours is a truly sweltering kitchen. Oops. Uh, as such, you would be well advised to ask yourself, can I stand the heat? If you earnestly believe that you can, speak to me once more, and I shall be glad to guide you through the enrollment process. So you have the resolve to walk the path of the culinarian? Wonderful. You must speak to Guildmaster Lingsath at once. This will come as no surprise, but he's the finest chef in Limsa Lavinsa. His skill and dedication are second to none. You'll find the Guildmaster up the stairs yonder, keeping a watchful eye on his charges. Impress upon him your desire to learn, and he will surely find a place for you to stew. By which I mean the guild. I feel like when you're carrying around a bow, you're supposed to take the string off of it. Well, that's assuming you don't plan to fire it at a moment's notice. Hey, guess my answer to that. Yeah, you're in a restaurant. I like I was watching, thinking like, how weird would it be like in today's world if I just walked into a restaurant with like a giant ass rifle attached to my back? And then, but I'm like, you know, there probably are places in the world where you do that. I was gonna say, but it's so weird. Store, Wyoming. Depends on where you are, and also. Is... Sorry, I'm cutting you off, Tim. I was, I was just naming places in North America where it's common. Um, yeah, because it, it's also a subject of much contention. It's like a, a notable topic. Well, Matt Venture, I take it you want to join our guild. Let's have a good look at you then. Ah, what's an underfed whelp like you know about cooking? Judging by them scrawny arms of yours, you'd struggle lift, struggle lift a spoon, never mind a skillet. Ah, I, I just, uh, I just. Honey, do you not see the projectile weapon attached to the, yeah. her back? It don't take <laughs> muscle to be a culinarian. Else, it don't even take talent. It's not on its own. Nah, last more than anything, becoming a good cook boils down to passion. You got that? There ain't nothing you can't achieve. This is a true, uh... uh like, like those famously are not nearly as dainty and feminine as fantasy would have us believe, because you need a shitload of upper body strength to fire one properly. Yeah, I also use a lance and a giant axe and several other weapons that take a lot of brute force. Yeah, well, th those are stuffed up your butt right now where you can't see them. So tell me, have you got it? Have you the passion to become a culinarian? Hell yeah! That's the spirit. Ah, your passion for the culinary arts is plain to see. You'll be needing every bit of it if you want to become a master culinarian. Why, if mastery was a 12-course dinner, I'd hardly have finished the soup. Make no mistake, our trade's as tough as old mutton. Passion's the only thing what gets us through the grisly bits. But enough talk. What do you call yourself? Well then, Mana, welcome to the guild. To mark the occasion, I present you with your very own skillet. Ain't much to look at, but a little more in service and novice like yourself, because you can cook almost anything in it. Now then, let's see whether you can tell which end's which. Aye, aye, I know you said you struggle, struggle lift a spoon, but you won me over. Now, show me you can hold a skillet, and I'll get you started on your first task. Yeah, you know, I think after that speech, I would have made the item you get a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, in fact, lift this spoon, then, then you're ready to get started. <laughs> Alright, is Culinarian the last one? The second to last. So is there like a real life equivalent to an outfit that gives you a bonus to cooking? Like I guess like a hairnet, you know, saying you won't have to worry about your uh, hair. Yeah, a hairnet gives you a bonus to food not getting returned to the kitchen because there's hair in it. Yeah. But an actual chef's uniform um, will protect, protect you from heat and splatters yeah, like and an oven like mitt. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oven mitt would help. apron apron yeah okay well i don't know does the apron help you cook better or does this help you stay clean while you're cooking well it's staying clean isn't the problem try concentrating on what you're doing while bacon splattering your chest but also staying mm. clean absolutely helps you with cooking once again if you're not staying clean you're struggling to make good food Good cooking is a matter of controlling the parts that get dirty. And keeping it away from the food you want to serve. So we really should all be going around in, like, uh, PVC cat suits. Oh, 
house that I need. Because, you know, like all the, all the grease and stuff, you just wipe it off. The problem with that is then you can't control what it gets wiped off onto when you touch literally anything. An apron can go in the washing machine. Oh, yeah, no. You, 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 you um... It, that's, that's simple. You put a pool in between the kitchen and the rest of the restaurant. You just, you just you know, swim through the pool and when you get out, you're clean. Eat egg. Okay, okay. Let's just take a page from the Kerbals and wear spacesuits everywhere. I'm sure that's practical. Maple syrup's ready, is it? Bloody time. Dude, that was like five seconds, but okay. Let's see how it tastes, though. Let me just eat a whole scoop of maple syrup. Oh, this ain't bad. Maple's all right. Consistency's uh, nearly there. Short, damn sight better than a lot of novices manage. As you probably know, maple syrup's one of the most popular sweeteners around. A key ingredient in all manner of cakes and treats. What you probably didn't know is that boiling stuff down can see maple sugar. A different, a different sweetener with different uses. Just goes to show even the simplest ingredients can have hidden complexities. I said earlier that a culinarian lives and dies by his utensils. Well, that's just half of it. He also needs to know his ingredients. That's something no one comes with experience. Keep your nose to the stove. Report back when you're ripe for another task. Now that you've reached level two, it is time to unlock the secret that you can also get syrup from corn. Ooh, Storyteller 3. I'm guessing that's just number of quests. Since, you know, apparently we've got oil fields in this game, why don't we have corn syrup? Yep, complete 100 unique quests. Why did I put that on my watch list? These are all on my watch list because I copied all of my settings over from my other character. Because I couldn't get it to copy the right settings, so I just told it to copy everything. I wonder why they're fields anyway. Like, I feel like you should be able to just build an oil pump anywhere, you know, and not have it affect the surroundings other than right where it is. Like a windmill, you know? You don't, you don't have to, like, clear out a whole plot of land for a windmill. You just stick it there. Well, you want an oil field so you can build mul it builds multiple pumps, which increases the rate of extraction. Okay, so build build more pumps. Is it is it just for convenience? Like, do they do they seriously do they just clear out all the land just so they they can easily stick a bunch of pumps there? Yeah, basically. Hmm. There are other ways to do it. Um, one some city in. California, I think it's L.A. actually, has a bunch of oil pumps, you know, in the middle of downtown, but Ooh. they're all disguised but behind uh, bake, uh, fake building facades. Yeah. I'm also thinking, like, at what point does building a bunch of pumps stop being cheaper than building one really big pump? Uh... There's mechanical problems with building one really big pump, one of which being, um... Struggling with how to describe Yeah, I suppose there's a certain point at which it's too big, it's not practical anymore. It's not the size of the pump that's the problem, really, it's the size of the hole. Or in specific, well, the volume of oil around, around the hole. Hmm. Okay, that went from a fun euphemism to a gross euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not the size of the pump, it's the size of the hole. That's what she said. That's what I was thinking, and then the quality of the oil around the hole. Like, uh, okay, now, now we just get the gross. It just sounds Some very technical. Some And you're just reminding me of the Family Guy episode where Peter's trying to oil up his pecs and he can't find any oil, so he finds a salad that has dressing on it and rubs the salad all over himself, and it doesn't help. Then, then he's just got a bunch of salad stuck to himself.
I feel like this is a question for the Family Guy Reddit or something like that. Find me a scenario that does not have a Family Guy anecdote related to it. Oh no, no, it's that's it's it's I've, I've mentioned this before. It's like the trinity of things that are related to everything. Everything that ever happens has like been referenced in either Doctor Who, Homestuck, or Family Guy, or Simpsons. Simpsons no, not is a really. really. Good one actually. That, I don't know. Maybe whole, I haven't seen as much whole, of the Simpsons, but that's why there's the whole joke. Like it is a common joke of Simpsons did it first. Yeah. The problem one was. Sec. One sec, I gotta go run through this. Greetings, adventurer, and welcome to the Carpenter's Guild. We are the artisans who take wood and grant it new form and purpose as the archer's bow, the lancer's spear, and the novice's shield. Oh, that's right. This is the guild where I have to count how many uh, lewd jokes there are. Uh, double entendres. If, carpenter, if carpentry holds any appeal, you should consider joining our guild. <laughs> Might you be interested in learning the ways of woodworking? Not, <laughs> not from this guy. Not from this guy. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, before we proceed, I think it only right that I acquaint you with our guild's storied past. Since the founding of Gridania, we built our homes and crafted our weapons from the trees of the Twelve's Wood. As our nation grew and prospered, the woodworkers' repertoire expanded to encompass a greater variety of art articles, okay? mm -hmm. and carpentry devote, developed into an art. At first, there was no association of carpenters. Each individual worked and sold his services independently. However, the advent of water mills meant that more efficient construction methods were needed, along with more formalized maintenance regimes, all of which necessitated organization. The Carpenters Guild was founded to oversee the operation of water mills and promote cooperation between woodworkers. Now, I must mention at this point that we owe much and more of our prosperity to the Great Lone Growery. Skip to there. Thanks to the hard-working botanists, we are blessed with the finest lumber in all Eorzea. The confluence of ideal circumstances allows us to provide all Conference. manner of goods and services to the people of Gridania. My services. Advice, that was rather longer than I intended. Still, I trust you've gained a greater oh, understanding God. of our guild. We expect our members to drink deep of the collective wisdom that the guild has amassed over the course of its history. Ooh. We actively seek an understanding of wood and the techniques required to work it, rather than simply waiting for the top. We expect, in short, nothing less than total commitment to the craft. If you wish to start down this path, speak to me once more. I shall explain to you the enrollment process. Yeah, I got you. Would you like to learn more about the enrollment process? Wonderful. I should mention at this point that Timber, Timber Master Beaton assesses all would-be apprentices Ooh. personally. Hold on. We'll get to that one. So you must obtain his approval before you begin. Timber Master Beaton can be a harsh and unforgiving man, but if you love the craft and have the will to learn, you could ask no better tutor. He is, quite simply, the finest carpenter in Gridania. Of course, it will take you some time and no amount of effort to comprehend the full extent of his teachings, but you may rest assured that he will not lead you, to, lead you astray. That said, when you meet him, I would advise you to choose your words carefully and um, resist the urge to run away. That's the line that proves it's very much on purpose. Uh, you, you know, you told me not to look for double entendres, and uh, so of course I couldn't Here's resist finding all of them. Here's where it starts. His name is Beaten. That's one. And he another, works with wood. Another green adventurer come to play with saws. Well then, I suggest you first speak with the... Oh, you've met with Korg, have you? That is well. But no, the decision to initiate you in the guild rests with me. Tell me true, adventurer. Have you a mind to devote yourself to the art of carpentry? Hell yeah. The look on your face bespeaks determination, or may have trapped wind. Still, you look strong enough to hold a saw, and if your resolve is indeed genuine, I give you leave to remain, for, for the time being. So, oh, you look strong enough to hold a saw, but not strong enough to lift a spoon. Apparently. You must have very strange proportions. However, you are useless to me in your current state. You are as a seedling, some potential, perhaps, but no more like to thrive than perish. Experience is what you require, girl, and I shall give you the means to acquire it. Take this saw. It is old, yes, but sharp as needs be. Now, prove to me you are not completely incompetent by taking up your new tool. I'm counting that one. Once you have done so, present yourself to me for inspection. Okay, so that means don't apply the outfit on this one. So that's two. We're not oh, counting okay. present okay. yourself. I, I, I will do it for this one. I wouldn't, actu I wouldn't actually do that canonically, but for this one, it's fine. Take a drink every time he, uh, you know, says something that you could interpret as lewd. I have to put this on first. <laughs> oh. Good. You have proven that you know how to grip a saw, but do not mistake it for a mere tool, for it is a part of you. Of your arm. <laughs> oh, you I can see. And can you put down a part of your arm? No. Mark me then. If you do put it down, of course, lose the bloody thing. I shall use mine own saw to demonstrate you the pain of losing a limb. Not quite. Won't count that one. Uh, but I jest. One-armed carpenters are scarcely half as useful in my experience. 
In any case, merely holding a saw does not make you a carpenter. Whatever something think, you must become one with it. Learn to feel with it as you work the wood. You know, it wasn't Counting clear whether he was threatening to cut off one of your limbs or one of his own limbs. <laughs> <laughs> you must become one with it and learn to feel with it as you work the wood. So yes, I'm counting that one. That's three now. To wit, you must first know the wood. Demonstrate your knowledge by bringing me a length of maple lumber. Maple lumber is made for maple logs, just so. Our man Farrell, by the entrance, will furnish you with such logs for a nominal price. Of course, and every guild has it out for maple trees. The fresh cut logs are laden with water. To guarding its decay, we use wind shards to hasten the natural drying process. Do not forget to do the same. Thank you. So maple, even in real life, is a very soft and forgiving wood to work with. So it's good for beginners. And it gives you syrup. So, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. They recently added cherry trees to Minecraft and they give you this pink wood. And I might be wrong, but I don't think that's what cherry wood actually looks like. Do I have maple lumber already? Maple lot. I need more. It can have a very slight pink hue. It's more peachish, I think. I I was under the impression that it was dark red. That's the heart. Isn't <laughs> it? Ah, so the outside is a different color. Yeah, the heart wood is dark red. The sap wood is kind of a peach, very light pink color. I get why Minecraft would do that, though, because they've already got wood in both of those colors. Ugh. I need to smoke something with cherry wood. Fucking cockroaches. Thanks. I don't mind them being just generally around, but I hate it when one just starts climbing all over my keyboard or my screen or something like go away mind your own business hey you need to use well okay if you're willing to kill them which you really should be you need to use this material that i just got because holy crap it is working now granted i still need to swap it out because i, I have oh. learned a lot more about this um i assume they're german cockroaches still because that's what you and i were played with and they probably came with you uh, they... No, I came with the apartment. They, um... Uh... Literally over a course of weeks... Uh... Rotate into new generations. And so their adaptation yeah. is insanely fast. Um... And if you keep rotating which material you're using to get rid of them... Uh, they, they literally start mutating over time. And eventually yeah, one, one of several reasons I don't want to be killing them is because if they're alive, then I'm not creating selection pressure. Hey. You should be creating selection oh, if you're, pressure. If they're alive, you're one, cr creating an overbreeding situation, but two, if you're killing them, you're killing the adventurous ones. Yes, you should be you should be creating selection pressure in that you, yeah. are, you want them to select to stop being in your living space. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I feel it. Which is why I've been trying to make use of things that cockroaches don't like. Not that destroys them, but that repels them. Because if they don't like my living space, they will choose not to live in it. Except well, if they don't like your living space, they'll choose to keep living in the walls. Except they're German that's fine. So that's not how Fuck the walls. Anyway. I just don't want them in my computer. There were no or my bed. Saw and Carpenter moved as one as if dancing. Do you see this grain? How it flows softly like syrup. Durable yet pliant, suitable for weapons and armor both. This child is maple. Trace the grain with your fingertips and memorize the lines. Consider every characteristic when choosing your materials. This is what it means to know the wood. Still not counting it, but the maple lumber you have brought me is acceptable. You have passed the first test. I'm not doing right, boyfriend. Yet, for all it has grown, your knowledge is still lacking. You must needs learn more. A true carpenter knows the qualities and uses of every tree in the forest. When you know the lines of the maple better than those upon your own hand, return to me. I, sh I shall have another test for you. Until then, child. Or we just move on to the next quest right now. Nope. I'm going to go learn other things. 
and I'm hopefully going to- Like, uh, yeah, the one that actually up. will tear you a new one, you know, when you're a beginner. Back here. Not rain! Ugh. Okay, so I need to go- Put on a hat! Directly out the middle. Uh, I will put on... I'm just gonna put on this stuff. Nope, not that one. Not that. Not what? What? Where is? There it is. Hey, hey, but not. Oh, I forgot to do the. Yeah, it's important to have on your drip when it's raining. Ah, <laughs> that's the good one. Okay. Oh, hey, it's Millicent Bystander, international jewel thief. I need a, uh, I need a shake off. No. I, could, I suppose I could do examine self. Just, just press A and D rapidly. Yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna shake anything off doing that. Get some Taylor Swift music going on in here. Greetings and welcome to the Leather Workers Guild. Here we produce the finest leather goods, taking care to honor the lives which were sacrificed for their creation. Our leather armor is worn by the archers and lancers of this great nation, and favored by all who prefer that their protection does not come at a cost to mobility. If you wish to place an order, I bid you visit Fenuel Fineries. If, on the other hand, you have a mind to join our guild, I should be happy to assist you. Might you be interested in becoming a leather worker? Yes. Nothing would make me happier than to welcome a new initiate into our ranks. However, it is essential that you first understand the burden that every leather worker must bear. As you cannot have failed Why to notice- Why is there a confirmation dialogue to join a guild if you can join every guild? I don't understand the question. There's- you don't lose anything by joining a guild. So like, why do you need to join the guild? It's you're just- you're just clicking through to get the quest. Because they want to make sure that your attitude is good. <laughs> I see. That's why they have the, are you sure you want to blah? And the thing I keep saying, hell yeah. Anyway, as you cannot have failed to notice, the Falls Wood is blessed with an abundance of life. We Gridanians have long hunted the forest's creatures for both nourishment and clothing. But Gridania is unlike any other place. The elementals that watch over the Twelves Wood have never looked kindly on the taking of life. And those who flout their governance do so at their own peril. The elementals decreed that life not be taken without due necessity. And so the Trapper's League was formed to regulate the hunting of animals, even though nothing in the game stops you from just hunting things as much as you want, but... The Leatherworkers Guild was subsequently founded to manage the fair and equitable distri distribution of pelts. Nowadays, adventurers are a major supplier of pelts, and leather goods have become widespread, but in times past, they were rare and precious. The Leatherworkers Guild has not forgotten those times. We treat leather with no less respect than the living creatures once it comes, we craft goods of the highest quality, in so doing, we honor the lives lost and minimize the need for further killing, an oft-forgotten benefit of our product's surpassing durability. Our guild is also the sole producer of the famous Fenyul brand of leather goods, the pride of Budani. These products represent the ultimate expression of our core tenets and the transcendent technique which shape them. Know, though, that being a guild member does not automatically make you a Fenyul artisan. You must earn the right to become one. Most of the leather workers here, having the fruit of their labors bear the Fenyul brand is yet a distant dream. That is the life which awaits you should you choose to walk our path. Success will not be handed to you, but I guarantee you will have the opportunity to seize it. So, if you wish to make a name for yourself, craft goods which are the envy of all, you've come to the right place. Speak to me once more, when you used to have you decide to join, blah blah blah, expect you to kill Master Kiva. She's a brilliant artisan, personally responsible for the creation of countless Fenuel products. You have doubtless heard her name before. I actually have. The Guildmaster's patterns are uniformly elegant. With them, even novice craftsmen can cut their materials with minimal waste. It is for her to decide if you are fit to join us. She can be found in the work area within. Present yourself to her and do not waver in your determination. You are filled with determination. Kinky. So, I kind of hated her at first, and then I really liked her later. So, you wish to become a leather worker? If you've spoken with Randall, then you've been told what it means to work with leather, the weight you must carry, the responsibility you must bear. Not just to the elementals, mind you, but also to the guild. Our craftsmanship is unrivaled. Each member is expected to live up to that reputation. Once you join, there's no turning back. If you dishonor us, I shall flay you myself and make a chocobo saddle from your hide. Will you swear to uh. uphold our traditions and be the best leather worker you can be? Hell yeah! Very well. You may learn our craft within these walls. Though you seem ill-equipped to do even that. I'll give you a head knife to help you on your way, but the rest is up to you. Do not presume that your association with us means your work will bear the Fenuel name. 
so you prove yourself worthy, you will not be permitted to so much as touch a Fenuel product, much less craft one. Now then, for to continue with your initiation, you need to put that knife in your hand first. Talk to me when you're ready to begin. Boop. Remember the loan shark guy from Limitless? No. She's talking about flaying you, and I'm like, If you don't return my money, I cut you at waist, pull skin up overhead, and tie knot in it. You don't die from this. You suffocate. No, do not reassign that to my drip. After armor for culinary. You should make your rogue outfit like all red and pink. Okay, maybe later. But for the moment, so I'm, that's basically rouge. Just, I'm basically just wearing what I, <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. Oh, wait. I have to. That. I actually remember this time. Uh, also, preferably did I do it? Yes, good, good. Oh, and I gotta put it out in my thing. Leather worker. Uh, where does that go? That's here? Yeah, if you wanna, or... if you wanna annoy astronomers, you know, just go on a forum and tell everyone about how Pluto is a rouge planet. Is that you, Tim? Yeah, that's me. Hail the dark root angles of sad. Hang on. Hail is an adjective, not a verb. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I'm just saying they're doing well. Yeah, it's, no, it's saying they're mm. hail. Like, hail they are, you know? Granted, there should be a comma there, but whatever. Okay, hang on. Well, you passed the first test, gripping your knife by the handle and not the pointy end. Now it's time to see how well you can wield it. Make me a circle the of The pointy letters. end goes in the other guy. You'll need an animal skin to do so. Newcomers to our craft often imagine that they need to hunt in order to obtain their materials, but if you have the sense the gods gave a chocobo's arse, you realize that's hardly the case. Oskif, over by a receptionist, sells most of the items commonly used in our craft. However, she cannot supply you with earth shards. And that's it for my advice. The rest is up to you. Once you've made the circle of leather, bring it here to be inspected. I can't say I have great expectations for your work, but see to it you do not waste good skins. Now, away with you. She wants you to carve a circle? Yep. XP boost is not good. It's a straight to level, level 4. I do not understand that, but whatever. Isn't the leather ready yet? Lady. Lady, please. Yeah, it's been like two seconds. Alright, here we go. I'd like to see you craft something that fast. The most critical of all crafter guildmasters. Aye, this is indeed leather. This is indeed leather. After a fashion, your work is amateurish in the extreme. The leather is unevenly tanned and practically unusable. But you show promise. Well, about as much promise as the leather you haphazardly created. Crafted. Still, it is apparent that you paid due respect to the life from which you came. Would you performed any worse, I'd have cast you out without a second thought. But you didn't, so I won't. Approach each, each task in earnest as you did today, and I'll continue to advise you. However, you alone are responsible for your development. This is a business we're running, and neither I nor your seniors have the time to hold your hand. Apply yourself to learning our techniques and return here when you've acquired some skills. Mayhaps then I will have an errand for you to run. Huzzah! I still didn't click the thing, did I? Oh. Um, how many more crafting glasses do you have? Uh, three. Okay. Why do you ask? Once you finish those, will you please repair your gear? It's bugging me. Uh, I don't. I can't. And yet. charge your phone. I have to learn how to repair things. That's a separate quest. You do? I don't remember where, where, and when I get it. You'll have to remind me. I think, anyway. Oh, maybe I can. Wait. Oh, I have to get... Wait. Hold on. Why can I repair the shoes, but not the rest? So, you know how, like, you're not supposed oh. to adopt... I don't have the right jobs for repairing them. Go ahead. You know how you're not supposed to adopt wild cats? Because, like... 
then there'll be a, a, a vacancy and so the other cats will breed more cats. I don't remember this hearing this, but okay. So yeah, I'm like they've they got territory and stuff. Like you're not supposed to disturb the population of cats. I don't know. That's what I heard. Okay, but what if the wild cat adopts you? Because that happened to someone in my family. Yeah, that's the cat's fault. Can't blame yourself. Anyway, you were saying? I was just that's just kind of my motive with the cockroaches. I figure, you know, if I kill them, they're just going to replace themselves with m more better cockroaches. Okay, please so. talk to anybody. Who, yeah, that's the whole adaptation thing I'm talking about. That's why you keep changing. Yeah, I wanted to not do that. Yeah, they're not going to be better as in suddenly wielding flamethrowers. They're going to be yeah, more accommodating good. to the conditions that killed them off last time. I, I, Ray, I recommend you talk to somebody who knows a lot about cockroaches, because they may be able to properly impart to you why not killing them is extremely bad for your health and for your continued, you know, ease of living. Okay. Honestly, the only real problems I have here are that this place is poorly insulated, so it gets cold, and uh, pollen gets in. And that so when whenever leave, there's like a pollen bloom, like it's just my nose is just exploding. When you leave, your landlord may be able to claim that they weren't there before you got there, charge you buku money for having to get rid of them. Hmm. I'll have to check on that, but probably not. Because there were a lot of reviews of this community citing cockroaches. Tenacious Earth might help. Reviews is not in your contract. Yeah. Okay. Alchemist skilled. Goldsmith skilled, weaver skilled. Okay. Goldsmith, weaver, or alchemist. Don't oh, sorry, you're asking once. a question. Um, Goldsmith, let's get all the roasting done out of the way at once. Okay, so I got two. Where does this one take me? Oh, that takes me out here. At which point I can then walk right in here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Why am I still up? Because you haven't gone to sleep? Uh, I was sleepy like five hours ago. Also because staying up a little bit longer gets you to a more uh, appropriate time to go to sleep. No, you don't understand. If I disturb my sleep rhythm, it'll go all out of whack, and the next thing I know, I'll be staying up till 5 in the morning and sleeping through all the business hours again. I do understand. I also understand that the only way to properly fix that is to force yourself through some yeah. things, usually by getting somebody else to help, to always go to bed at a reasonable time and get up at a reasonable time. So what do, well, you, want, what do you want your sleep schedule to be right now? Uh, I, that's mm, hard to say because honestly, um, I don't want to sleep ever. Sure. That is one of the side effects of depression. No, I mean, like, I don't want to need to sleep. It's, yeah. a, it's a huge waste of time. That is one of the side effects of depression. But it's, 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 it's also because humans die if they don't sleep. That's not my point. My point is that a very common side effect of depression, two of the very common side effects of depression are finding it very difficult to accept sleep as a necessary thing and finding it very difficult to stop sleeping when you are already sleeping. Oh, well, that's been a thing like most of my life. 
Yep. It's, yeah, it's it's difficult to go to sleep when I'm awake, and it's difficult to wake up when I'm asleep. Yep. Now, it's, it's true to some extent for most people, or for a lot of people at least, but particularly true for... Yeah, and also I have chronically have delayed sleep-wake phase disorder. So, like, hence, I gotta be really, really protective of my sleep rhythm, or else it's gonna go all out of whack. Yeah, but do you want your sleep rhythm to be going to, going to sleep at 7 p.m.? Not long term, but, you know. That's why I'm asking. What do you want your sleep schedule to be? Better than staying up until 7 a.m. I don't know. Because my goal is 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's, that's what I'm I'd like to be adaptable, you know. I mean, theoretically, you I think the question it. here isn't what would please you, it's what do you think it should be to be most optimal? I don't know. I'm unemployed. It doesn't matter. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you to choose what do you want it to be right now. If you want it to be chaotic, let it be chaotic. If you want it to be vaguely something, but you struggle to do it and therefore it is chaotic anyway, that's still kind of wanting it to be chaotic, but whatever. If you want it to be something specific, pick that, and if you want me to help, I'll help, but otherwise, whatever. Eh. I don't know. I'll get back to you when I know. That's fair. Good morrow to you, adventurer, and welcome to the Goldsmiths Guild. You come to observe our artisans at work? Indeed, it's a marvel to watch goldsmiths transform raw metals and uncut gemstones into sparkling rings, earrings, and necklaces, some of which possess magical properties, no less. You know, if you'd like to try your hand at goldsmithing, the guild is open to all adventurers like yourself. No, no prior experience is required, but we teach all you need to know about the craft. Would you be interested? It pleases me greatly to hear you say so. As the first step, I would have you understand the purpose of our guild. The vast mineral resources of Fanolin have given rise to a grand goldsmithing tradition, which has been refined through the ages. Our techniques are renowned across the realm, our creations held in the highest regard. However, we have Esh... Eshtame's lapidaries... Um... My voice is traveling back a tiny bit from one of you. It has been for a while, but it seems to be doing it more consistently right now. I can't imagine it's me. I've got headphones on. So does Ray. Seems like it was an issue with Ray anyway, though. <laughs> Although that was from Ray's side, not, not mine. It was when Ray had her mic muted. The music she was listening to was coming through anyway. Uh, no, it wasn't somebody somebody shared a video in Discord and I clicked on it and my microphone was muted, but for some reason the audio just piped straight through to Alex. In any case, uh Eshtame's Lapidaries, the pre premier source for Uldon jewelry, were not content to rest on our laurels. Seeking to advance our craft, we turned our eyes to the east, the only place in the known world whose goldsmithing was said to rival our own. We built the finest facilities to beckon their masters hither, blended their foreign techniques with ours. Our guild quickly became the center of Eorzean goldsmithing. I hear you shall benefit from the refined wisdom of countless veterans craft veteran craftsmen. You will learn to see the potential in your materials and shape them to your will. These are essential skills, for a goldsmith must hone, hone his ability. For a goldsmith must hone his eyes to identify and appraise all manner of materials, and, when needs be, recognize imitations for what they are. It is even said that a master goldsmith can ascertain the authenticity of a man himself, and may one day come to possess such vision. But even the most magnificent jewel begins life as a rough hewn stone. It must first be cut and polished before it can delight the eyes with its brilliance. If you would become a goldsmith, you must needs refine yourself as you would a gemstone. It will take much time and effort, and there is no guarantee of success. Should you be certain that this is the life you seek, speak to me once more. I want to see that happen. I want to see a guy be like, hmm. Nah, you're not real. Yeah, this dude's fake. Yeah. Before you can embark upon your journey to become a goldsmith, you must first seek an audience with our guildmaster. Are you ready to do so? You shall find Mistress Serendipity on the workshop floor just down the steps. Show her your burning desire to learn, and you are certain to receive her permission to join. Luckily, her permission is all you need. This won't get it from the other one. Stop right there, you little troublemaker. Troublemaker, people are working here. Oh, pardon me. I, mis I had you mistaken for a mammoth. For a moment there, I... Ah, let's start over, shall we? What brings you here today, adventurer? Do you... Nah, I need to slightly... Like, do you perchance have aspirations to become a goldsmith? Oh, that was it, right there. Hell yeah! That was her question. <laughs> really? That's great! Welcome, welcome! I'm Serendipity, but you can call me Sarah. 
or is that too informal? Sorry, I'm still unaccustomed to this whole guildmaster business. Uh, right. What did you say your name was again? Adrian? Oh, right. Man and Nun. Yes. Well then, Man and Nun, work hard and one day your creations may line the shelves at Eshtane's aesthetics. Trust in yourself and you can achieve anything. That was sufficiently inspiring, I trust. Good. Next door of business, here's your new chaser hammer. Well, I, I say new, but it's actually a bit weathered. It's a joke about them all being called weathered tools. But never you mind that. Just show me that you know how to hold it so we can get started. I like her. I want to add her to my inventory. Oh, she's great. <laughs> this will make a fine addition to my collection. <laughs> Is this, is this one of your rules for this playthrough, is you need to make a new outfit for every class? I'm not making a new outfit. I'm just putting on the same gear that I'm wearing for the others, because it's the best gear. Yeah, but you named it Goldsmith. Yeah. That's so I can click the Goldsmith button and switch over to the correct equipment. Yeah, so you made an outfit for it. Even if it's the same outfit again, but like, you, you made an outfit for it. Sure, but I don't want to have to click the right weapon and swap over every time, especially when it won't swap the rest of my gear. Like, if I go if I go in here and drag my uh, it's not that, drag my bow over I've, I've already, you don't have to explain all this. Oh, I got okay. the point. Apparently I actually can wear the other stuff, but anyway. Yeah, you should go build some arches. Great, let's get started. Though, to be honest, I'd swear you've done this before by the way you wear that hammer on your head. Mind you, even if you do have some experience, a responsible guildmaster must ensure that her charges have a firm grasp of the fundamentals. Therefore, I command you to craft me a copper ingot. It's simple, really. I thought this was a gold is... guild. All you need is copper ore and a wind shard. Our guild supplier, Aston, can supply you with copper ore, and I gave you a few wind shards along with your hammer. At least, I think I did. If it turns out you don't have any, you'll need to get some yourself. Isn't this exciting, Mana? Your first real challenge is a member of the Goldsmiths Guild. Other... Show me the ingot when you're done. Good luck. No, those were bronze ingots. Yeah, but you had to use copper to make it. Yep. Oh, which I so, think I have. Shit. You can do the same thing. It was going to be the same thing anyway, but, you know, like... It, ah, they crap. didn't even, like, put a new name on it. I, I don't see your point. Also, this is the Goldsmith Guild. Why are you dealing in copper? Because I'm dealing in metals in general, but more importantly, I'm creating finer metals, which is why these ingots are more, like, they're smaller because they're... So copper is considered not... Never mind. Copper is more moldable and less protective. Now I want copper armor in Minecraft. Why can't you make copper armor? Co copper's useless. Here we go. Come on. Hmm, you know, I think this is quite... Mm, G -g 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 Utter garbage. The worst. Not even fit for making a chamber pot. Quiet, Gigi. I'm the guild master. I get to decide what's fit for a chamber pot. Uh, um, please, excuse me. Do they make those out of copper? I think it's a bit overzealous at times. Gigi is my assistant, but he has the habit of butting in with his opinions. Most mammoths are rather simple, capable of no more than rudimentary speech. They can be relied upon for menial tasks, but little else. Gigi, on the other hand, is quite intelligent. And quite stubborn, I might add. I suspect that's due to his age. He's been with the guild for an eternity, ever attending each guildmaster. But recently, he's been coming and going as he pleases. Gigi, kneel before Gigi, the one true guildmaster. Respect my authority, ignorant mortal, or suffer my wrath. Respect my authority! It's like this every day, Mana. I'm afraid the experience he's accumulated over a century of assisting guildmasters has made him arrogant. It's quite intimidating, really. I may be the guildmaster, but he's like a walking, talking archive of all knowledge to do with our craft. Oh, I completely forgot about your ingot. Sorry, sorry. As I was about to say, I think this is very, very good for a beginner. It's reasonably pure and well-formed. I just sure you got a nice delicious. Mana. What you need now is practice. So keep practicing with your hammer and come back here when you've got more comfortable using it. G -g 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 -g. Big loaf Water of off. carrot bread. Greenhorn. Greenhorn. 
So the mining and botany guilds are kind enough to give me the same item, but color two different ways. Every single crafting guild gives me the same ugly green curta. That's why I have six or seven of them at this point. Aren't you able to just take a coin instead? No, th not that. Idea. Oh. That one, they, they, they just give it to you. Ooh, ow. Um, back to you. Then you're closest to the Weaver's Guild, so we're just going to head there. And then Alchemist. Oh, hey, you can dye them there. different colors. Get, get them in all the colors of the rainbow. Unfortunately, I have to make it to a different part in the story to learn how to dye things. You're getting prepared. I still find it so weird. People just stand around. They're off making dinner or something. Yeah, but like, just, just go in the town square and just stand there, like, all day. Oh, someone needs help. Uh, let's switch to my lowest level job. Hey, everything's at seven. Gladiator it is. Make sure I got the best gear. If it's work, you see, just run up to someone and quickly change your clothes, yeah. Indeed, your timing is impeccable. Soirees to be held with all of Uldah's elite in attendance. Once the invites went out, the orders came in, and with that, and that with a fury, every lord and lady from Cape Deadwind to Cinderfoot is demanding the latest fineries. I need hands, and I need them now. We're gonna, we're gonna sew hands into our... Yet I cannot spare the time to go off in search of them. Yeah. Would you care to aid us, friend? Ask no more than you. Welcome to our doors, any willing souls you might find. Come, let us see how you fare. Show me your warmest welcome. Put welcome in my... The video compression on the stream makes welcome look really weird. Is it bad? It's... It's one of those things where image compressing algorithms, like, they... You, you work well most of the time, but occasionally, like, it's the wrong color on the wrong background and the compression alg algorithm completely butchers it. Kind of out of your control. No, as long as it looks okay. Like looks like JPEGs, for instance, like red text on a gray background tends to look horrible in JPEGs, even at at maximum quality. I dare say I would work for you myself. Now hurry off. We need those people. I'm a degenerate who loves JPEGs for most purposes. Like. JPEG compression is awesome, but there are those rare circumstances like putting red text on a gray background. Where you, I do not want to do that. Work at the Weaver's Guild? Hmm, I'd be lying if I said I weren't interested. To whom might I go to inquire further? I'm, I'm guessing that whatever you're using for the stream does not like orange on tan. The Weavers are recruiting. Finally, my chance to become a famous designer. Okay, I I was able to go... Whatever. All they had to do was go and talk to the person at the desk. So the Weavers need help, do they? Sorry, friend. I'm all set for point. I appreciate the offer, but I must refuse. I'm all thumbs when it comes to stitching and whatnot. <laughs> this one's particularly funny. Hey, want to work for the Weavers? Weaving work? Take a look at me, friend. I'm a bloody guard and on duty, no less. Move <laughs> along now. I, I like how you were supposed to... <laughs> you were supposed to try to recruit the... Are they seriously making you try to recruit members? Like, you just got here. Yeah, but That's I was too like, realistic. I was like, this person seems in, need of, seems in need of help. She's like, I am in need of help. You've returned. Well, how did you Oh, fare? right. This was a side quest. Two potential recruits, you say? Welcome, news. I only hope their zeal for fashion will show in their efforts for the guild. What we do here may seem all silk and satin, to be sure, but the work within these walls yep. is far from Still, easy. actually. In that, like, I suppose... Like, imagine, trade... just... Let, let me finish the dialogue, please. I suppose our trade is not unlike any other. Okay. Oh, you were done. Sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, 
I, 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 imagine just hiring some rando passerby to be like, hey, we need you to advertise our thing. Yeah, but... Where do you think sign spinners come from? In this world, adventurers are a thing, and adventurers offering to help people for small amounts of gold is also a thing, so everybody's gotten kind of used to being like, ah, man... That's uh, true. Oh, hey, there's somebody over there looking to, you know, do random You're stuff. You're not just some rando. There's a lot of people you're like a like, rando for hire. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are like, hey, you're an adventurer. You'll do whatever I want, right? <laughs> yep. Also, I like that she's like, we need people to come here and work. And I'm like, cool, I got two others for you. And also myself. Greetings, adventurer, and welcome to the wellspring of the dawn fashion. Humble thread, our peerless artisans weave wonders, dreams, and fabric form. We're renowned as the Eorzea's finest purveyors of quality textiles and as her foremost arbiters of style. Needless to say, such renown was not won without effort. Ours is a tremendously demanding profession, you see? But also, <laughs> like many others you've heard about today, but also a highly rewarding one. It's a little wonder that so many adventurers have set their hearts upon joining us. Might you be one of them? Yeah. Ah, I thought as much, but I'm sure you're eager to learn all about our illustrious history. As I'm sure you know, Thanalyn can be a perilous place, its vast deserts being wont to punish the unprepared. While a menagerie of ferocious beasts stalk the sands, the greatest foe is, of course, the midday sun. And so, ever since man first set foot in this region, he has favored yeah, light, okay. flowing fabrics that shield him from the sun's rays while allowing the skin to breathe. Of course, the Uldans have ever been people of taste, and demand for more extravagant designs spurred innovation, resulting in textile goods who appeal extended far beyond our borders. Merchants had little trouble selling Uldan fabrics to foreign markets, so great was their reputation for beauty and quality. And when traders from those same markets sought to peddle their lesser products to Thanalyn, well, it gave us a little cause for concern. Sun silk tapestries is synonymous with the textile trade in Uldan, you'll see. Those who come here hoping to peddle cheap rags swiftly learn the price of doing business in our territory. Wiser men and women with an interest in our trade choose to join the guild, which the company generously operates for the betterment of Uldan society. Ah, capitalism. We offer our members the tools and techniques needed to become successful. Should they prove themselves especially skilled, they may even be offered direct employment as sun silk weavers. Just imagine, adventurer, your designs could one day dictate the course of Uldan fashion. If you desire such fame and influence, then you might be granted a place with us, provided that you're willing to embrace hard work. To ensure candidates can endure the rigors of our profession, our guildmaster has taken upon himself to evaluate each one personally. When you're ready to submit yourself to his rigorous scrutiny, say the word. The word. The word. Are you ready to meet your guildmaster? First impressions are everything, and you do not want to... Oh, wait. Yourself Hang on. I'm, I'm screwing this up. Excellent. Though I do wonder if your attire is appropriate for the occasion. Redolent Rose. Uh, Bird. You will find the esteemed Redolent Rose. Redolent or Redolent? Bird. Bird is the word. Tim? What was that? Redolent or Redolent? Um, I think you should say Redolent. Supervising guild operations over Yonder. He is relent... Uh, how should I put this? He is relentless in his pursuit of Ellie. Excellent. So long as you demonstrate that you're similarly committed, he will treat you fairly and with respect. So that all sounds very ominous. Until you walk up to him. And realize that he's just a total sweetie. You have heard, haven't you? Yes. I gotta give him this. <clears throat> what do we have here? Another adventure in search of thrills and excitement? Shall I dance you a merry jig? No. Well, if this fails to please you, I suggest you run along. Perhaps the women of the Ruby Road Exchange will be more to your liking. Oh, so you mean to become a weaver? Then we have something to discuss after all. I shall be blunt. Weaving is an art, and like all true artists, <laughs> we must make... <laughs> my little guy? We must make sacrifices and suffer for our craft. So tell me, adventurer, are you prepared to suffer? It's one of the most violent, are you ready for this, things. Hell yeah! So you say. The only time will tell. In any case, we need equipment to get started. This needle should suffice for now. You need not explain what a needle is, I trust. Good. Then hold it as you would when sewing. Show me you're ready to begin. Yeah, needle. That may be, that's a good starting item for a weaver. Granted, he gives you a needle and a little sewing circle, but a thimble would be good too. You know, Cause that that's like a thing people keep with them. Usually, the needles are communal. At least in my experience, like the, the, just, the needles are just around. They're like they're like paper clips. Sorry, Redolent Rose, I'm gonna have to be ugly now. Or or you know, you order them and you get a bag of fifty of them in the mail. Yes. 
Oh, Tim, you weren't here for that part. Which part? I got a bag of needles. Right? Right? Yes. Okay. Well, well, you look like you were born to hold one of those. And so, I suggest you keep it somewhere safe, especially when clambering over haystacks, as I shan't be issuing you another. Now, It is a lot easier to lift than a spoon. You certainly look the part, but it remains to be seen if you can play it. I bid you craft me a spindle of hemp and yarn. A trifling task, yes? Well, do hope you find it so. Should it seem even remotely testing, I have no future at this guild. To make hemp and yarn, you will require mocha grass and lightning shards. The former can be purchased from our own, from our own dear... Gijima. Gigima. Gigima. Gijima. I'll say Gijima. I find it mildly threatening that he has a health bar. That, actually, no, that's not a health bar, but also, if he did, all of them would. Well, Lada, you will have to find for yourself. That is all. It looks like a health bar. Is it not? Oh, wait. Do I have my good guys? No. Two more good guys. Oh wait, no, that's just the, that's just the underlying thing that goes over the health bar. Yeah. It's been a while. Well, bless my soul, she can follow basic instructions. It would seem you have grasped the fundamentals. Good girl. Yarn and cloth may be mere materials, but they must be crafted with no less care than a whole garment. Although the finest garments are greater than the sum of their parts, their parts are invariably the finest. Do you remember this, Mana, as you continue your training? Practice making yarn and other simple items, and return once you have attained a basic level of proficiency. Tedious, I grant you, but necessary. You did tell me you were ready to suffer. Ba -ba -da -da. It was a uh, desynthesis. I was thinking about the tempo. That makes sense. All right, up to the alchemist guild, which is the most annoying to get to. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it would be fastest to go. There, probably. Ugh. There, there, yeah. I wonder Alchemist if I skill. can make traps. What was that? Okay, Fred. Care to elaborate? the cockroaches i'm like maybe i could like get like a bottle and put a bunch of sugar in it and like make you know like 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 rig the bottle so they can't climb out i recommend you look up the effectiveness that effectiveness of that online. i've tried uh it's it's very hard to find resources online that are anything other than how to poison cockroaches yeah but specifically look for that but like look for stuff like i don't want to kill them and see I literally no. I I have learned in the last couple of years. I can be extremely specific with my search, and I will, and still get the exact opposite of what my search term says. Because all the search engines now are backed by AIs that get the general vibe of what you're saying, and then guess what you really mean. It's not just that SEO is screwing with it too, where they put in oh yeah keywords for what they think you should have been searching for instead of what you actually were searching. Yeah, it, it was always a little bit of a problem. I just, I find in the last year, it's been getting a lot worse. So he's yeah. Bing. Bing is the worst offender of all. Bing just spider crawls. No, Bing is backed by an AI. It's, it's, it's like more than the rest. Okay. Yeah, they, they're actually using the GPT 3.5 language model as the back 
backer for their uh, search algorithm. Well, they are for Bard. I don't know about the search algorithm. I think DuckDuckGo might still be running off of an old-fashioned system. Yeah, that's the one I was going to recommend next. But it tends to just give low-quality results. Have you tried to ask Jeeves? I should ask Jeeves. Try just going Only on Only 90s Reddit. kids remember. Try just going on Reddit and making your own post. Yeah. Or my... Uh, an adventurer with my favorite kinds of people. I find your unquenchable thirst for explanation nearly neatly complements the burning hunger for sagacity. Sagacity, yeah. That marks our dedicated members. Welcome to the Alchemist's Guild. Though I hesitate to find alchemy in such narrow terms, my main field of expertise is the concoction of various potions and elixirs. There are salves to treat all manner of afflictions, not to mention miraculous libations that enhance the imbiber beyond her natural physical limits. As an adventurer, I'm sure you can appreciate the eminently practical applications of our work. What say you, madam? Care to take up mortar and pestle and join our ranks? Yes. Wonderful. Now then, allow me to give you a brief history of the guild before we tackle the official paperwork. Though alchemists what? are presently the quintessential brewers of potions, the profession itself arose from the desire to achieve an as-yet-unrealized ambition. The original driving purpose behind our art was, and perhaps still is, the discovery of a process that can transform base metals into gold or silver. And the mystical medium Aww. thought necessary to effect such a transformation is the Philosopher's Stone, which is itself believed to have Panassian properties and capable of bestowing eternal life. What's up? No, I just feel bad for them because, you know, it's it, it, as history marched on, we, we humans eventually did figure out how to turn things into gold and silver, and it's so much harder than any of the alchemists expected. Yeah. Though success yet eludes us, years of e endless experimentation towards this goal, golden gold had the initially unintentional consequence of unearthing a wealth of knowledge in the field of alchemical medicine. Regretfully, alchemists' potential to enrich the lives of the masses was first met with a wave of distrust, as if our ability to create helpful compounds was akin to dabbling in back-alley witchcraft. The profession eventually gained credibility in Uldah through its integration in traditional medicine by Frondale's Frontistry, an institution known for producing respected physicians. Once the city's shift in perception became known, budding alchemists wishing to study without fear of persecution journeyed to Uldah from every corner of the realm. It was not long before this gathering of inquisitive minds banded together to form the Alchemists' Guild. Thus, while our organization is intensely focused on perfecting and sharing the fruits of our research, it is also of paramount importance that we uphold the reputation of alchemy itself as a legitimate discipline. If you would revel in the secrets of our art, then you must be prepared to shoulder the responsibility I have described. Take a moment to dwell on these words before you truly enter the world of alchemy. It is, of course, a magical world, so they probably can magically turn shit into silver and gold, but like... I'm level 90 and everything, and still haven't learned how to do that, so... <laughs> I have a quick uh, you're question. You're level 4. Yeah. Why is Thancred wearing an eye patch? <laughs> <laughs> have you arrived at a decision? You ready to exult in the arts of alchemy and commit to the responsibilities that your enrollment entails? Excellent. That allow me to direct you to our guild master. Gaining his approval is the last test you must pass before becoming a full member of the guild. You'll find Guildmaster Severian tending to his experiments at his personal workbench. I must warn you, he is a rather severe, I mean, intense individual. Pray choose your words with care. You know, giving this some thought, this is actually too realistic. Because I've been in job interviews before where the interviewer feels a need to explain the history and mission of the company at the beginning of the interview. Yep. But also, these are guilds, and so the guilds pride themselves on, you know, everybody upholding it. Yeah, no, seriously, I've, I've been, like, talking to them, they'll be like, yeah, our company was founded because we wanted to have, make a new paradigm in the manufacture of the, the thing and gather the, it's, like, I, yep. like, I, dude, I, I applied here, which means I either already know this or I care so little that I don't already know this, in which case you explaining it to me isn't going to help because I, I would, I don't care. Seem to think that you will that it will help somehow. But in any case, <clears throat> all right. Let's see. Let's see if I can give this guy a good voice. What? What is it this time? Ah, you must be the merchant's lackey. Come to bring my imp wings. Let's have them. Huh? Not a lackey. An aspiring alchemist, did you say? Speak up. I pray that I heard you arrive. And pray that I heard you arrive. Did that babbling fool Dietrich send you to me? Not the same. Go ahead. 
So I, th I thought there was going to be a pause. <laughs> it's, it's the same guy from the other end of the room, but with different hair. No, I mean, maybe the same face. I don't think it's the same face, though. But yes, definitely different hair. I specifically requested that I be disturbed for nothing less than the coming of a second calamity. Do I appear as a kindly mentor to you? My research demands my absolute and undivided attention. Now, be gone before I enforce it. Hmm, but wait. Hmm, perhaps I can... Yes, yes, you may be the very assistant I require. I have had a change of heart. Congratulations, I approve your application to the guild. It's with great pleasure that I welcome a fellow seeker of knowledge into the fold. We can dispense with the in interminable initiation ceremony, yes? Here is your first alembic. Try not to drop it, but there is much work to be done. Yes, much work. A chair is worrying me. It's because I haven't selected so the glow is over the chair. Uh, and yeah, the, it was happening to the table on the other end of the room. It's just like the chair looks like it's radioactive right now. <laughs> yep, yep. Or made of like green glass or something. I mean, in no, this cloud, I wouldn't put it past him. Look up uranium glass. <laughs> There is a glowing green glass that's made with uranium, and I, I don't understand why people still make this stuff. Okay. Like, it looks like how they make radioactive stuff look in cartoons, but is actually real. Because, you know, in real life, like, nuclear waste is always, like, this glowing green slime or whatever, but IRL, it's just, like, gray. Ah, I see you've managed to take hold of the Alembic without injuring yourself. An auspicious begin. Let us see if we can continue this trend of unexpected success. For your first lesson, I want you to use your weathered Alembic there and make me a bottle of distilled water. Distilled water is simply the end result of purifying a murkier sample of life's most vital element. As such, it provides the perfect introduction to one of alchemy's most fundamental processes, taking a material and refining it into a purer form. To perform this rudimentary exercise, you shall require a pail of muddy water and a water shark. The impure water can be purchased from the supplier standing near the entrance to the guild. The name momentarily escapes me. Uh, Esmanet? Yes, that was it. I know that name because I go here all the fucking time. <laughs> okay, so, so one, who's selling murky water? That's a scam. It's, because, it's gotta be a scam. It's because and and, and two, I have bad news, Severus. Water is not an element. Yeah, well, you know, alchemists. But, um, uh, it's because the novices use it, so and they expect me to turn it into clear water a thousand. Yeah, they're just they're just upselling you. They're like, hey, you know, in order to in order to be admitted into the guild, you have to buy our shit. Also, because there are crafters like Tim who wants to craft everything from raw materials every single time. Yep. It's it's multi-level marketing out here. You know, like in order to level up as an employee, you gotta buy all our stuff. If it happens that you find this basic task beyond your abilities, then Mayhap Alchemy is not the discipline for you, which would be quite upsetting, as I detest the thought of having to select a new assistant trying to disappoint me. It's worth noting that you can take your pickaxe out into the hills and mine some muddy water if you'd rather not buy it. Yes. Well, Hang on. on. <laughs> With a pickaxe. Yes. Yeah, I think the idea Mine some muddy water with a pickaxe. None of this totally makes sense, but the idea, the idea there is you have infinite buckets with you at all times, and so you crack the rock and yeah, just, pull the bucket yeah, under it. Right. You should be able to just go to any river. Yeah, well. Then it's not muddy enough. It doesn't matter, you're gonna distill it. But it needs to be sufficiently, in fact, precisely dirty enough in order to distill it properly. Mm -hmm. If Severian, uh, if Severus has that bad a, a, a conception of how distillation works, then um, he, he shouldn't like you be. Have uh, a bad concept of how distillation works in this world. For example, did you know that gold can only be found in one exact spot in the entire world? It's <laughs> us. Mm -hmm. <Sus. laughs> Magnificent transformation into an alchemist has begun. Do you understand the liquid treasure you have made? Yes, it is sim It is still simply water, now possessed of almost limitless potential. In a properly distilled state, water provides the base ingredient for all manner of wondrous concoctions. On the other hand, a potion created with impure water is not only unlikely to have the desired effect, but very well may poison the imb imbiber. The so you like, all manner of wonderful concoctions. Like, see, if we add mud here, now we have muddy water. Yes, exactly. Look well upon the substance you have refined. <laughs> See how crystal clear it has become. Not the most flavorful of libations, but still refreshing to pour over one's head on a stifling summer afternoon. 
Tell me, how did you feel the instant of its purification? Such a fine result must have sent thrills of excited satisfaction down your spine. Uh, no, because it wasn't high quality, so... Yes, I know well that sensation. Yeah, if you actually distilled it, there was no instant. It was mostly tedious, like, literally watching water boil. That's what a water shark is for. It makes it faster somehow. <laughs> to of glean course. a pristine drop from filthy swill, it is a miracle born of mortal artifice. Nothing can compare to that rush of triumph in the moment when physical laws bend to one's will. Nothing! The greater your mastery of alchemy, the more ecstatic that feeling... The greater... The more ecstatic that feeling becomes. Go. Fill your chambers with bottles of distilled water and revel in each success. Uh. I will now return to my experiments. When next you disturb me, I shall expect your skills to be worthy of a guildmaster's chosen assistant. Dun, dun, All right, you heard him. Dun, dun, Go fill your chambers dun, dun. with bottled water. With Dasani bottled water. Hey, as long as it's distilled. All right. One last job. One last one. You know, we've unlocked every single air hole class, technically. You're going to be so over leveled. No, I'm actually going to be under leveled. I was over leveled when I was using only one job and getting all the XP for that single job. Now we'll be able to split out the XP and everything. Oh, you don't have. I thought there was a separate character XP bar that always went up. Maybe I'm thinking of a different game. Not in this game. Okay, I want to go here with this. Oh, go play. There we go. To the airship landing! I still have to unlock the golden saucer. I will either do that with... I'll probably do that with the rest of the day. Which means I won't actually craft all the stuff this week, unfortunately. But doing all the level 5 jobs should take me a whole game session anyway, if not more than one. Actually, I'm not sure I want to. Hey, um, Tim, can you look up what level you're supposed to be for the um, Gold Saucer quest? Is that a 10 or 15? Because I think I actually want to. I would guess 15, but I can't look it up right now because I'm helping uh, Safira run uh, Duck Vigil for the first time. Yeah, that's totally good. What? Duck Vigil! Yes, Duck Vigil. Not going to send by hey come watch this message again because I'm only on for another 37 minutes. So. That's fine. They can watch for 37 minutes. Not everybody wants to be here for two hours. Well, you've been here for nearly four, so appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I did finish the drink I poured, so I guess I can... I don't have much obstacle to quitting now. I didn't want to leave it out all night. What's up, Sisyphus? Calamity really knocked the wind out of the fishing industry's sails, but the fisher folk are starting to return to the seas once more. It's past time I did the same. But before I can put out to sea again, I need to have a new boat built. Our guild has always commissioned Naldeek and Benelli's for its crafts, but they're beastly busy these days. 
If you want for something to do, mayhap you could run over to the Armorer's Guild and consult with Forge Master and Naza in my stead. I would know how long we might expect to have to wait. Looks like I'm doing this first. She's not the... Here's another thing that, uh, you know, that they did in Sword Art Online that I'm kind of sad I haven't seen in real life. All these NPCs could be people. Uh, like, that's, that's you could just, before. like, is, be Eve a blacksmith and do blacksmith stuff. Isn't Eve Online that it, way? It's, Eve takes a couple steps that direction, because, like, most of the materials and, and items in the game are produced by players. But they're produced by players by, like, clicking around in menus. You know, the... the, the, the most of the game loop of EVE Online is about the same for everybody. Like, there's not a there's not a building minigame. They're adding more minigames as they go. Like, there's a bunch more that weren't there before. Like, there's a hacking minigame now that wasn't there before. And Don't, don't, shops is what you were talking about there for a second. Don't those have to be run by something? Um, actually, player shops don't exist. Uh, the oh. closest are the player-owned stations that they've started adding, but I, I guess my understanding. there are some transactions you can perform there. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, one of the issues with this is um, uh, how the market would be affected by it. Uh, but... I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that. I'm pretty sure I've seen a whole discussion about that. Before. You'd need a game that's built for this. this but... a new boat for the Fisherman's Guild? I'm afraid now isn't the best time. You see, we've recently taken on a commission for a galley. This task alone has all our hands full. Mm, but look, I, I will see what I can do. The Fisherman's Guild has long been one of our best clients, and I'd be loath to disappoint Sisipu. It may yet take a while, but I shall endeavor to have her boat ready in a timely fashion. That is not an answer, but thank you. My head hurts. Guess what I did yesterday? Hurt your head. Uh, you know, technically, yes. <laughs> no, someone else hurt my head, actually. What'd you do? I, I um... I, I had, um... I had this weird lump on my head. It's like a mole, but it wasn't brown. And I had it removed. Nice. But yeah, apparently the way they did that was they injected me with lidocaine and then grabbed a scalpel and cut it off and then sent me home. I like they, I didn't even get a band-aid. So now I've just got a hole in my head. Weird they didn't put a bandage on it, but yeah. No. Yeah, the, the doctor was like, I can't put a band-aid here because of your hair. And I'm like, e really? I did that once as a, uh, when I was much younger. For a more... Yeah, like, I, I was kind of surprised they didn't, like, shave a little area around it and then stick a band-aid on there, you know? It just, it wasn't necessary to. Well, a well-wishing welcome to you, adventurer friend. You worked your way to Fisherman's Bottom. When you want fish for a day, you call a culinaria. But we fishermen feast for life. I've set the bait. Think you're ready to bite? Hooray, hooray! Looks like we've got a live one. Um, Let me walk through wait, the no. life of a fisherman in Limsa Laminsa. Bite biting seems like a very bad deal for me at this talking to a fisherman. Since we're surrounded by the seas, the fishing sites are a fisherman's delight. You can't fish it here, you can't fish it anywhere. It's not true at all, but okay. While some of us rope our fish in with rods and reels, others skim the seabed with nets for creepy crawly critters. You might say we cast a wide net. <clears throat> uh, people pratter about our pullers just about everywhere at Lisa. And there's much and more I haven't mentioned. We shepherd the ships, preside over the ports, manage the mongers. She's doing the same thing their guildmaster does, and somehow I totally forgot this. All while making sure not to leave any adventurers out to sea. I'll wager you prefer to work alone, so we'll set you off with a rod and reel. Now, you may not necessarily net the numbers net fishing yields, but pull, pull fishing positively pulls prettier prizes. And that's the long and short of it. 
When you're ready for another bite of bait, I'll reel you in before the guildmaster. I'd hate to hear you had a yes. change of heart. You haven't, have you? Spoken truly like a true bespoke fisherwoman. Well then, it's time you met the guildmaster. But unfortunately, unfortuitously, and somewhat ironically, our nefarious netmaster is out fishing at the moment. This moment and every moment, that is. So Sisipu tends to tasks that require tending to. She's the real guildmaster. <laughs> so just deciding whether you'll sink or swim with our guild. Sisipu's presiding over those pools. Whenever you, whenever you decidedly decide to say hello, she might seem somewhat standoffish, but she's only keeping an eye out for sharks. Be yourself and you have nothing to worry about. Unless I'm a shark, but okay. Sad. Even in yes. magic fantasy land. E even in magical fantasy land, the fishing industry is just horrible. How so? Um, well, trawling the sea floor is, like, very environmentally destructive in a really direct sense. And oh. net fishing in general. And, but then, like, you know what they do when they're trying to catch a bunch of fish for, like, commercial purposes and they don't use a net? Is they get a really long line and they put a whole bunch of hooks along the way so that, you know, fish will bite en masse before they have to reel it in. And they reel in a whole bunch of fish. And, like, that whole thing is just nasty and unethical. I don't understand how it's unethical, but okay. I, I understand you don't like it because it's hooking fish but like like a ton of fish yeah and it's not even being humane about it and like you know quickly pulling them out when they've been hooked it, it's, it's, it's they're just they're just stuck on the line that is no less humane and they're than... killing huge numbers of them too it's, you know it's not like people go out into the into the woods you know they're like oh we need a whole bunch of deer and so they just like get a machine gun and just kill a whole herd of deer have you ever seen bird hunting yeah, that's not that they'll, great either. They'll use spray shot to take down more than one at once. I'm just saying, that's that's yeah. hunting. It, it's, it's just hunting. And but yeah, anyway. th th there's a difference between individual hunting and like for per personal and commercial hunting of anything. Anyway. Yes, yes, save your breath. I heard every word between you and the mo- Malika. And you, you and then Malika. So I know she told you my role here. As she said, Wallaco's supposed to be the guildmaster, but apparently he has bigger fish to fry, so all his work falls to me. That includes making sure our new fish aren't shellfish idiots or potential anemones. You passed the first test by not laughing at that awful joke. Now you only need the right answer to this question. Are you prepared to fish like you've never fished before? And for the final time in AR! Hell yeah! Well, With you're smarter than the like of these. Them. I'm pretty sure somebody says that before the first quest is done, but maybe. Maybe not. You're smarter than the majority of bottom dwellers that find their way here. Welcome to the guild. Now, this wouldn't be so much of a guild if we sent you out to sea with only a pole and a prayer, so I suppose I can spare you a few pearls of wisdom, unlike all of the crafting guilds. Nevertheless, you're going to need that pole and prayer, so I can at least provide you with the former. Here you go. One out of two isn't bad. I'll even throw in these lugworms since you're not like to get far without bait. The rods we bestow upon our new fish are priceless objects, which is to say they don't cost anything. <laughs> Once you know what you're doing, you'll probably want a profit. But in the meantime, let's see if you can figure out how to hold your pole. Cough, cough. Ready the one I gave you, and your lessons can begin. I bring you grains of truth. Did you know that rice is the world's most popular grain? Readying your line. And now for one of the biggest difficulties I'll have with my limited inventory. Bait. Okay, uh, yes. Recommend gear, equip, gear set, gear set. Is, is bait hard to, it just takes up one square. Yes, and there are five <laughs> of them. There are so, so many baits because there are so, Ray? There are over 1,400 different kinds of fish in this game. Luckily, since I am not trying to catch every kind of fish, I'll only need to catch like... Yet. I don't know. You need a different them, bait for every fish? Not every fish. Oh, no. You need a different bait just for every, like, four fish. 
<laughs> and that's actually not nearly as true in ARR, but as you head towards later, uh, there's a lot of kinds of bait. A lot of kinds of bait. Now, again, I won't need so, so bad, but... Okay, there we go. That's at the right spot. And there we go. Ah, it's so pretty. Cool. Well, congratulations on completing the thing. You're looking quite formidable. Let's hope you don't scare all the fish away. Now, the first rule of fishing is to hold on to your rod. Take care of your rod, and your rod will take care of you. Let me know if I'm going too fast for you. Since you're new here, Love we're going to start rod. small. Be the rod. Much... <laughs> they don't come much smaller Spare than anchovies. the rod. You'll find schools of anchovies swimming around outside in Gladian Bay, so you can catch your meager supper without even walking ten yards. Anchovies are hardly the most cunning fish in the sea, making them an ideal first assignment. Simply bait a hook with some of those lugworms I gave you, dip it in the water, and the fish will practically catch themselves. Yep, I know how to do all of this. I've done many, many, much fishing. Many, much fishing. Whatever. Words. I read a webcomic about a game developer who makes a fishing game where you catch fish girls and then have sex with them. I mean, it's not really surprising. Alright, where am I putting bait? Where am I putting bait? Bait will go... Jeez. Yeah, the, the plot of the webcomic was the game ended up being far more successful than anticipated and the developer became a billionaire overnight and got into just all kinds of shenanigans. Oh, I was going to say, you may be happy to know that for the most part, you only catch one fish at a time in this game. That basically everybody you ever interact with, including oh, yeah, NPCs, you're ever you, you're not like the guild master who's going out and catching a bunch of fish. You're you're just an adventurer. Except we'll have a whole crew of people go out on a boat to do ocean fishing and still only catch them one at a time. Kind of. Yeah, that's nice. It's a little bit more honorable. That got me to level three. Wait, 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 wait. Food. See how quickly this can go. So part of fishing ends up way over leveled because you also catch things you didn't want. Yeah, it's just like in Minecraft, you know? Catch a whole bunch of shit. So yeah, already level three. The gathering ones ended up at seven. So we'll see where I get. That's four. A catch animation totally looks like you're stabbing yourself in the hand with the hook. That's five. Oh, hey, I learned chomp. I can toss that finger shrimp back in the water. Get another one. only caught one of the five that I need. Ah. Do you see how full my bars are here? There are yeah, many, yeah, you got a lot of things. moves. There are many things I could be doing to make this faster right now, but I cannot do that. At least Chan makes each bite faster. I also have so little GP. Yeah, that, that, that's like the only good fishing enchantment in Minecraft, is lure. Because th there's other ones that are like, they'll get you less garbage and more treasure, but like, the garbage and treasure categories are completely arbitrary. Half the time I'm fishing, I want the thing that's garbage. I'm trying to get like, leather or bottles, which apparently count as trash. Wow, I'm having horrible luck right now. Usually, did not take this out. All the sardines out there caught themselves on someone else's hooks. Yeah, I guess. Ah, fishing. The only one that gets its own little custom school. 
It's nice to let you sit. Did you know the fishing light makes it luckier? Yep, can confirm. I was wondering about that light on the end of your stick. So that light is an ability that does literally nothing except turn the light on. Except this game creates the vibe of fishing well enough that the entire fishing community is super superstitious about stuff and it's amazing. And yeah, so yeah, a lot of people are like, yes, having the light on absolutely makes it go fast. Yep. How you can sneaky fish. Yeah, that's I that that is so I can You don't want to get caught. Go places with higher level monsters and they won't attack me. That works up to nice. four levels above. That's super convenient. I yeah. should learn to fish. Because you, you'll get to be, be able to sneak eventually. Does it work even if you're dummy thick? I think so. Yeah. No, I only made it to level 8. That's a little surprising. Alright. Gobies are not used in anything. Toss it back in the water. So, I am... I am doing the head cannon that I'm tossing it back in the water. For some reason, the toss it back in the water ability you don't get until level 22. Why? <laughs> For some reason, I don't know. You should spawn with that. Uh, yeah. It doesn't occur to you until then that you can put the fish back after you catch them. Yeah, like, so, so you brought up Eve earlier. There's a mechanic that players have been requesting for like a decade. Which is, when you have slaves, right-click on them and turn them into civilians. Yeah. And and you can't do that. That sure would be so nice. So, you, you just have a bunch of slaves and they're just in your inventory and you're like, I'm not going to like make you do work or anything, but you, you're apparently still going to count as slaves for market purposes. Alright, now we get to meet the actual guild master. And by actual, I mean... Of course, even you can buy and sell people to... Technically, I guess they're all slaves. Here, chubby, chubby, here, ch Oh, wait, no, that's the other, that's the other person. Here, chubby, chubby, here, chubby, chubby. Fair flock of feisty fish you've got. Giddy up, guppy. Giddy guppy. Careful they don't slip out of sight. A while ago, to what do we owe the pleasure? My guildmaster's got to get after the guppies. Dividing up the daily drudgery, picking out a proper potable, and some such support and service. And who gets after the guildmaster? We have books to balance, you know. Books you should be balancing. I did my best to balance the books, but the bilge keel bent the boat back, bouncing the whole batch off the boat. That's not what... You know it was just an expression. <sighs> but that's neither here nor there. So long as you keep it the bit, mana, our books will balance themselves. Don't let that go to your head, of course. Any beginner can snag some anchovies, but you'll need to experiment with different lures and explore new waters if you want to catch the big ones. Fundamentals are fine, but the fish is but the fun is fishing for new finds. Like my uncle always said, fishing's like philandering. You never know what you'll catch. Gross. Uh. And with those well-spoken words of wisdom, we will leave you to your wiles. Hey, it gave me a third color of top. I still like the dark. I feel like the uh, Weaver's Guild should have given you the best clothing. Oh, this is the the big fish. Well, yeah, I'll have to do that at some point. Not right now, though. Cool. You go there. And that's it! I've done every level one class job, class, whatever. Okay. Oh, your, so. your chat is coming in reverse order. That's weird. What do you mean? The latest message is on top. Yeah, I could switch it, but oh, this works for me. No, I just I, th I thought it was I thought I thought it was just my messages that came in backward at the beginning, but 
then I just noticed that Tim's is after that, so, so, so they're yeah, all only backwards. So 15 minutes to go, I am going to go unlock the gold sauce. That's a fancy outfit. No, wait, no, I'm not unlocking the gold saucer because I'm waiting till everything is level 15. Or wait, so how come how come you're always getting the name of lower decks wrong if you're playing a game where you visit the lower decks all the time? Because mm -hmm. my brain thinks it's funny to always be wrong. That's fair. Okay. Um. Yeah, what should I do then? I guess I could just go start the level 5 quests. I'm always confusing people on Minecraft servers when I talk about dank oak trees and bitch trees. And they're like, what? I'm like, you know, the dank oak you get from the dank forest. Yeah, I guess let's just go start level 5 quests. I mean, unless you can think of... Sam, if you can think of something for me to do for 14 minutes... Um, a barrel roll. Do, do, do the barrel roll. For fourteen minutes. AFK in the Limsa Plaza in dance. That that'll that'll be legendary. Just and fourteen minutes doing barrel rolls. We go absolutely quiet. Like we literally just leave, and the stream is just running with me just dancing. You know, I don't think you'd be the only one who does that. That's what she said. Oh. Uh, the ugliest outfit. That's what she said. Can't oh, hey, it is craft. all red. I can't wait to craft less ugly gear. All right. Level five dollars. Let's go. Hello there, Mana. I must say you're looking comfortable enough with those stabbers of yours. Why, I reckon you're good and ready for your first assignment. Ordinarily, I'd stow me wids and let you get on with your work, but seeing as we only just dragged you into the shadows, there might be a couple things which you ain't, with, which you ain't yet familiar with. With how much I've been stumbling over words today, this is going to be rough. Let's build on what you likely do know, and that's the fact that Admiral... The Admiral... God's bless your soul, has outlawed piracy in Limsa Lamitsa. So, why do you think there's still so many sodden pirates in this town? I'll tell you why. It's because there's still one way for him to loot and pillage without incurring the wrath of the law. All you need to do is apply to serve the Thal Thalassocracy as a certified privateer. The captain with a privateer's license is free to terrorize the seas till the old goats come home, so long as he only targets vessels what belong to the Guardian Empire. Of course, considering how bloody vast the Empire is, that's plenty of loot to go around. Cruise feather holds with Imperial plunder, then sail back here to Limsa to offload the spoils. And that's where this particular case went sour. See, this one crew's got their fambles on a Magitech device, fire and mechanism to be precise, it was rooked out of their hull by some heavy-handed coves. If you recall, that don't sit well with the code. If bold enough to brook a pirate out of his due, then you best be prepared for a visit from the rogues. Ah, speaking of visit of rogues, Otterfoot, over here, lad. I want the pair of you working together on this. Pass sentence on them codifying rooks and bite back that Magitech part. Eh, what's the last need me for? You're in charge of new recruits, ain't you? It's man Mana's first assignment. Go to go along and give her the benefit of your wisdom. Since when was I in charge of new... Ah, bugger it. Ah, uh, so I guess we're to be partners for the now. The name's Karima Harima, but most of me fellows call me Underfoot. He might seem a touch reluctant, but Karima's one of our best. You just do as he says and you'll get the job done. The naming convention's different on that one. Mm. Harimu, Harimu, Harimu. 
Well, most of the Lalafell I found, the first two syllables of their name are the same. Of their last name specifically, but yes. That's why it's uh, Tataru. Oh no, you're right, that is first name. You're right. Yeah, Tataru, Nanahomi, Coco Melon, you know, all of them. Um, yeah, it's two different naming conventions because each uh, race has two different... Uh... Races? Uh, yeah. Um... I don't know the word I'm trying to think of. Whatever. Bloodlines? Ancestry? Tribes? Nah, that's not the word I'm looking for either. <laughs> Alright. Alright, then, me young rogue. Seems this is your first official outing. I want you to be sure you danced. I want to be sure you dance steps right at the task. <laughs> what? That agrees. Yeah. With them short blades, you need to get good and close to your mark, eh? But we ain't leading swads and shining armor, and the lighter kit we wear ain't much protection from a click to the gant. So if you don't fancy spitting blood and teeth, your best defense is simply not being there when your mark winds up to last land a nasty clout. Sliding round to the flank usually does the trick, but there's some rum fun every rogue should master. Shade shift. Clear your mind and trust in your speed. You can leave an axe-wielding brute or spell-flinging mage chasing your shadow while you bury your stab of your disgust. Right now, now it's right. Now it's time you put this lesson in practice to get some of those Aurelia out lower the Kenosha. I hope you was paying attention, lass, because those tentacles can pack a wallow. Enjoy. And then I don't actually yeah, have to I use eat our Aurelia for breakfast. They're disgusting. <laughs> but they're better than driftwood. I'm hungry. So we were talking about eating jellyfish heads? Oh no, I was, I was thinking about cereal and other things that normal people eat for breakfast. Like jellyfish heads? Also, that's, that's like the whole jellyfish. Like, not just the head. The, the, like, there's that, and then there's the little dangly bits. Yeah, those are the limbs. Well, that would make the middle of the body, then. I don't know, it's a big round part of the top. It's the head. Crap. It's a slightly less efficient part. Mm. Not really surprising. All those lamps look like Easter eggs. Wrong holiday. I know. Boy, oh boy, sure wish I had my job. It's my lowest level job. So glad you're here. Nice, and there's already someone here doing it. Big jellyfish. Of course, that's not all jellyfish there. They like, they like put some squid and some like copy pot or whatever. Back to row. Nope. Row. Oh, I need to kill them anyway. Nice. Yeah, that's the quest. No, not for the quest. I need to kill them for my challenge log. I mean, I also need to kill them for the quest, but that's. Oh. My hunting block. Not that. Uh, uh, nope. What did I set to? Is it H? Yeah, there we go. Ship H. Yeah, so. These are the critters I gotta kill to get bonus XP.
I wonder how much of a pacifist you could be in this game. Like, how, how far could you get without having to fight anything? Not. Without having to fight anything? Yeah. It's basically nowhere. Hmm. Let's see. Main, main scenario quest... I don't know, Tim. What's the first time you have to fight fight something with the MSQ? I don't know. Something about, like, the imagine. squirrels and the ladybugs, you know? Like, at, at very least, like, how far can you get without having to kill any animals? That they're the, the first things you have to kill, no matter what job you're doing. But, like, there's a bunch of random side quests where, like, oh, I need you to go, like pick up rose hips off the ground yes. you don't have to kill anything to do that how much xp could you get just doing that stuff oh that's different yeah that's that's fair that would be an interesting thing to find out yeah and when you level up some more i'm sure other quests will start unlocking because you've reached a sufficient level you just won't be able to do any of the next story at all and like all these crafting ones you know they're like oh we need you to go mine some copper out of the rocks that's fine Uh, yeah, I guess it would be very chill gameplay because uh, you're not going to do the storyline. Hey, if you were playing, you might be able to figure that out. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I don't want to do that. That sounds tedious and boring. Like, it sounds like the, the sort of thing that someone who's like really likes being in the Final Fantasy world would want to do. But I don't get much of anything out of the game. It doesn't really immerse me or stimulate my imagination or give me a feeling of accomplishment or anything. Like, I, that, that's why I only play it for social time. Sorry to be so negative. No, you're fine. Symptom of not every game is for everyone. I feel okay about EVE, but not really enough to maintain a subscription. No, yeah, me too. With your practice, I, I paid like $30 at the start for when they were doing like a three months for something. It's some kind of promo where they're like three months for $20 or whatever. And I like, I bought that many years ago and have not paid them a cent since then. All right, one sec. Done with your practice then. Ah, the sting of them tentacle buggers will soon teach you to stay on your toes, eh? Ah, you got your blood rushing. I say it's time to get down to work. First things first, we need to track down the Maddled Coves, but rook that Magitech gadget. Might be as one of our rogues has heard something. The guild thrives on information, you see. We've agents scattered far and wide with their glazes keen and their waddles to the ground. Let's pay a visit to old Itolwen at the Drowning Wench. Ask her for a week ale and see what that gets you. So, Paramu's response to being asked to help you is to sit on the chair and give you quests? No, no, he's heading out to get his own information. He just gave you one task to make sure that you... You know. Yeah, he, he should be going with you and doing stuff. He is now. The, the first thing was just, hey, I'm telling you how to no, do this I get extra it. thing like, to keep you safe. Go practice. Going off screen to get information. For all we know, he's just going to the local pub. Well, he's actually and, and, to go and to drinking. Pub. Taking a nap. I mean, I'm about to go to the pub and take a nap, so... I guess that's only fair. No, he's like, you go to the pub and talk to this person, and she'll be able to give you any information. That... Ooh, good lord. You should, uh, you should go philanderize. I hear it's like fishing. You never know what you'll catch. Which is yeah. funny, because the way you get really good at fishing in this game is to very much control what you're catching do all kinds of little you things. You know what I haven't seen in a game? I haven't seen spear fishing. Spear fishing exists. In the game. Just not until later. Yeah, you should 
then you know it's what you're one of the most catch. annoying things yeah. for fishers is that they give you one piece of gear um, yeah. for spear fishing that doesn't keep up with the rest of your gear for the rest of time. All right, I should be yeah. going and helping with that thing, but first I'm going to go sleep for a week. But you know exactly what you're going to catch. You know, you see it in the water and you stab it. One sec. Done. Guys. One sec. All right. And it is sleep time. Hey, no, put on pajamas. Come on. These are my pajamas. Your pajamas. Okay. Look, I won't be able to craft pajamas until, wait, wait, like basically the end of the game. Lana wears leather high heel boots to bed. All right, you know, takes all sorts. Don't use the blanket or anything. All right. That was very, very fun. Catch you all later. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.